Opinions or ask questions regarding town government. Anyone for public, public forum this evening? Good. Good, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, good. Seeing no takers, including on the Board of Selectmen, we'll go the uh, consent agenda. Uh, jam pack consent agenda this evening. All right, the board will consider accepting the pol following public session minutes from March 1st, 2016. Parade permits. The board will consider the following parade permits. Proponent Michelle Stevens, Hopkins and Little League Parade, starting at the Town Common, ending at Carrigan Park. On Sunday, April 24th, 2016, 11 a.m., and streets closed will be Main Street, Hayden Road, Church Street, Grove Street, and Pleasant Street. And then the second one is by the proponent Aaron Nemzer of DMSC Sports. The Boston Marathon Jimmy Fund Walk starts at the Center School, ends on Main Street at the Ashland Town Line on Sunday, September 25th, 2016, starting at the Brighton Early at 5.30 a.m., closing streets, Marathon Way, Ash Street from Park Street to Main Street. Third item is the Sylvan Way Whisperwood Preserve Conservation Restriction and Action Item. The Board of Selectmen will consider sign the conservation restriction for zero Sylvan Way. The CR is a product of cluster subdivisions approved by the Planning Board in 2003, located adjacent to the Phipps Woods and Cameron Woods Conservation Areas. These, along with the Town Forest, will provide approximately 268 acres of contiguous open space. And fourth is a marathon fund request. The Board of Selectmen will consider approving a marathon fund request for $1,750 for the purpose of transferring 16 Hopkinton High School football films from 1930 through 1982 from 8 millimeter or 16 millimeter films to QuickTime files. These will be shown at various times as part of Hop TV's From the Vault programming. Sir, what, yes, sir. Three and four, please. I'm going to break out items three and four. Anyone want anything else broken out? Uh, I'm not sure which number. I haven't gotten my agenda open yet. But, uh, uh, he wanted to break out. The Marathon Fund. Yeah, that's course. those two, the last two. Thank you. Good. Chair a motion to approve uh, items one and two, which are the minutes and the parade so permits. So moved. Second. Motion and a second for the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Pro's present not voting. That's unanimous. I item three, Mr. Herr. Item three, uh, Sylvan Way, Whisperwood, CR. Yes, sir. Mr. Kamalo. Yes, through the chair, um, what the, um, the town staff is willing to come as if they review the CR. <coughs> we are satisfied that it will be done which provided. And I think most significantly, I think this is a significant step uh, on the town's part where we now have approximately 268 acres of contiguous open space. So the answer to Brian's question, town council has reviewed and is happy with the language. Okay. Dave, you know what I'm going to ask, so <laughs> go ahead. Okay. Um, you, you're not going to name this, I assume, or you're going to come to us to name this? Right now, Right. there is a sign that's there that says Cameron Woods. Yep. And we would propose that this be called the Sylvan Way Cameron Woods Trail. Okay because it is the Sylvan Way property. Um, I don't know, I know who developed it, and that was Craig Myers. And um, I would think that the residents would probably appreciate the fact that it's called Cameron Woods Sylvan Way. And we're proposing to modify that sign to add another board above or below the Cameron Woods sign that says Cameron Woods Sylvan Way, and that is a trailhead that goes into Cameron. And uh, parenthetically, I would note that it's more than 268 acres because essentially it's not only Cameron's Phipps Town Forest, but it's Whisper Way, which is another six and a half acres. It's the town, it's the state park which is accessible and conjoins that side as well as 203 Pond Street on the other side for another 32 acres. So, I mean, we're talking about maybe 1,000, 1,500 acres along with the state park. Okay. Thank you. If there's any other question? Any, any CR or any uh, um, clauses in this con conservation restriction different than those that typically in the past anything unique about this land? No, there's nothing that's unique about it because, again, it 
um, abuts a high-end subdivision and we're going to try to keep it that way. I don't believe we're going to put in any trails in there because there are trails in Cameron, Phipps, and wisp away so that the trails probably won't be necessary other than what's already there. Okay. Anybody else got any questions? Uh, Mr. Kamalo. Just, just to be clear, uh, thank you for sharing the information regarding the proposed names, but that's not part of today's approval. That's what I was going to ask right, right now. Yeah. Right. So we well, can't name it today. Yeah. Okay. But that's what if you're you going to come back me, to us. If you want me to submit formally, we can do that. I'll be happy to submit a letter. I think we need to because I don't. It's on the agenda, so we can't name it today. So right. if you can just send us a letter saying you want to, we'll put in the consent agenda and we'll just do it. Fine, we'll do it. Thank you, sir. Um, Chair, I move we approve the conservation restriction for zero Sylvan Way. And a second for the discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. President, not voting. That's unanimous. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Marathon fund request. Back to you, Mr. Harrigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Do we have anybody from the Marathon Fund here tonight to talk to this? I've, I've spoken with members of the Marathon okay, Fund. Okay, fine. And uh, in the last couple of days, I was just looking up online. My, my main concern when I pulled this last time was uh, making sure that this purpose was fitting the charge of, of the Marathon Fund Committee and those funds in particular. And uh, going to the town website, you <clears throat> can see that under the charge of the Marathon Fund, <clears throat> it says, um, after allocating monies to various expenses in the uh, that the town incurs related to public safety and logistics for the race, meaning the Boston Marathon, the remaining dollars are allocated to the Marathon Fund Committee for student-athlete scholarships for Hopkinton High School seniors, as well as funds, uh, as well as to fund grants to various needy community groups in support of recreation, athletics, and community. Um, so assuming, uh, and I do assume that um, the funding for these scholarships is already set aside, I would uh, say that this does fall under the area of community, and uh, I don't have any further questions on that. Okay. Anybody else got any further questions? Okay. Hearing no questions, Chair, I a motion to approve the marathon fund request for $1,750. So moved. Second. Motion to second for a discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, President, not voting. That's unanimous. Okay, so that's all said. <coughs> item four on the agenda, staff appointments and action item, the police department full-time police officers. The board will consider the appointing of two full-time police officers. Let's see how badly I can butcher this. Brian Sanchione and Alex Cruz Vergara. Of course I did. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> Welcome, Chief. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, let me first start by saying, uh, st starting off and saying that uh, this promotion process, we had 130 applicants, and these two gentlemen here tonight uh, rose to the top. I'd like to. Uh, Thank once again Maria Casey for helping us out on the interviews, Sergeant Van Ralton, and Officer Linda Higgins. I'd also like to point out there are two FTO officers that are here tonight, uh, Bill Burchard and uh, Peter Booth. The FTO officers are the field training officers, and uh, they will be with them for a total of 11 weeks. I'll start off with our first officer, uh, Brian Sanchione. He is from Milford, Mass. He is 23 years old, a 2011 graduate of Milford High School, a 2015 graduate of the Worcester State University, where he uh, obtained a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. You didn't, uh, you left out the fact that he was a starting center for the football team too, so. It looks like one, doesn't he? <laughs> um, Officer Sanchione decided to pursue a career in law, uh, law enforcement to build community relations help needs of the public, and to help keep citizens safe. He was sponsored, self-sponsored, through the Reading Police Academy, which means he paid his own way to go, and uh, graduated uh, February of this year. He's extremely excited to begin a long and successful career in the town of Hopkinton. 
now uh, the, the fact that he went out on his own and obtained uh, a certification through the academy certainly helps us financially and uh, also assists us, assists us in replacing officers that retired and getting them on the road uh, within a 12-week period. He's certainly shown dedication and the ambition to become a, a police officer, and I'd like to introduce him now. Thank you. Good evening. Hello, Brian. Welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here. Good. Why don't you take a minute and introduce yourself to the board, why, why you're here, what you want to do, et cetera, et cetera, and then maybe we'll see if folks have questions. Uh, sure. Well, like Chief said, my name is Brian Sanchione. 23 years old, come all the way from Milford, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. five minutes down the road. Um, you know, I took this hiring process not knowing what to expect. I was happy enough to get the, uh, get the opportunity, you know, get hired through a great department. And, you know, I've realized in my four weeks working here now that the people here that are behind me are super helpful, um, awesome people, awesome community. And, you know, I just hope I can do my part and better in this town. Great. All right. Well, thank you for coming in. Thank you. I appreciate Mr. it. Mr. Starry, you want to have any questions? Well, welcome to Hopkinton, Brian. Thank you. Um, you know, we're happy to have you here. We're always happy to have people who are coming in who, who self-sponsor and uh, nothing to do with the finances, <coughs> but, you know, just showing a dedication and, and a desire uh, to, to get into this profession. Um, we think that our police force sets a high bar uh, for the communities around uh, around us, um, you know we're <clears throat> we're constantly having uh, the chief and and other members of the management staff uh, coming in here and you know showing the different initiatives that they're taking to help make the community better and their different ideas on ways that we can change things, whether it's within the community within the department. Uh, I know that the chief has always shown that he's got an open door to people with new ideas. I uh, hope you take advantage of that. Hope you stay with us for a long time, and uh, congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mr. Marshall. So, uh, Brian, welcome. How did you how did you manage to stand out of 130 applicants? Um, well, first off, I had to score high enough on the test. Put me into, I believe it's the top 25 to get interviews. And um, during the interview process, I just tried to do my best to show, you know, who I truly am and you know, what I can bring to the table, why I want to do this profession, you know, how dedicated I can be, how hardworking I can be. And, you know, the people that interviewed me just, I guess, believe that I could do it. And I appreciate that. That's, that's great. Sounds like you're going to be a good fit and you're going to be part of a great team. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mr. Catino. Yeah, con congratulations. Thanks for coming to join us. You know, it, it's, it's great that we were, you know, we just brought brought a couple of guys up to lieutenant, some new sergeants, and I'll see you guys up there. It's funny, I'm looking up saying, geez, you know, in a few years we'll be seeing these guys moving up to sergeant and lieutenant. You know, it, it just, you know, the ambition to invest in yourself, to, um, to um, put yourself through, the, through it, uh, it was just uh, shows um, uh, great thought and, and, and belief in yourself. And, and that's the kind of guys we, we love on, uh, on our police force. Um, you know, it, like uh, Mr. Sestari was saying, you know, we, we have a, uh, there's a high bar. And, um, and for you to, uh, you, the two of you to come up uh, and beat out 128 other people, you guys must really be great. And so welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mr. Hart. Uh, my colleagues have said all the nice things. Welcome, Brian. I won't repeat uh, the comments there. Uh, thank you for joining the team. We're looking forward to working with you. And uh, I'll say that having you here. Chief, if I could with you, sir, for a moment, please just explain to the community how these two positions uh, came about and where we are in the process so that people aren't misconstruing what's going on. Yes, this uh, position is a replacement of uh, Officer Pat O'Brien, who retired, and also a extra funded position, uh, six month funded in July of uh, 2016, that we picked up. As part of the town meeting process? Uh, absolutely. Chief, next. Moving on. Alex Cruz Vergara, he came to us from <coughs> Falls Church, Virginia, where he served as a police officer with the Falls Church Police Department for over five years. During that time, Alex has served as a field training officer, a general instructor, was a member of the SWAT team, honor guard, 
and won several local and regional awards for his efforts in the uh, OUI prevention and enforcement. Alex has moved here with his son Andreas, his wife Christine, who has recently appointed associate provost of Wellesley College. I don't know what that is, but it sounds very important. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is excited to become a member of the Hopkins Police Department and looks forward to applying his skills and experience here. Uh, like uh, Officer Sanchione, uh, Alex, uh, as attended the academy five years ago, went through the uh, local accreditation pro process becoming a police officer, and obviously his uh, experience in academy were accepted, and he is moving right into the FTO program. Alex, welcome. Thanks Thank for coming you. tonight. You know. God, explain to us why you want to leave Virginia to come up here in the wintertime. Uh, it, was, it was a matter of supporting my wife. <laughs> you know, I, I did what I could. So I'm right. glad to be here, though. Good. Well, happy to have you come on in tonight. Uh, Mr. Catino, you want to get any yeah, questions? Uh, yeah, uh, th thank you for, for supporting your wife. Uh, you know, we're, we're the... Uh, uh, we're welcoming the, the riches. Thank you for coming in already... Um, with uh, five years under your belt um, and some great uh, accreditation, so I really appreciate it. Um, so, who got the job first? Did you? You got the job first, and you? It's uh, it's no. interesting, it, actually. Um, Christine was approached by some recruiters from Wellesley uh, early on in the summer of last year. Uh, as soon as she expressed interest uh, in the position, I knew to support her, I would have to start looking myself. So I began the uh, the search. Um, and luckily enough, I was picked up by uh, Hopkinton uh, just about a week before she got the official offer. Um, so <laughs> it, it was me first, but Christine was soon to follow. <laughs> Great Photo time. finish. Fabulous. Thanks. Thank you very much for coming. Mrs. Astori. Yeah. Um, you know, this is great. These are, these are the fun nights that we have. Uh, they're, <laughs> they're not all fun uh, up here, but... Um, these, these, are the, uh, these are the fun parts, uh, you know, where we see people coming in, and we hope that uh, both of you, as well as all the other members of uh, the police force, uh, keep your enthusiasm and, uh, and, and good thoughts for the community. Um, you, know, you guys are, are really uh, part of the foundation of helping create uh, just a good atmosphere throughout the community. Um, and in, it's important for, uh, you know, the... The, the kids like your son and, and others uh, to look up to our police force and not see them as a threat, but see them as a partner. And, um, you know, with, with the help of the two of you, uh, then we'll be able to continue that in Hopkinton. So, Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hart. I think this is great. It's great to see the stars align for you guys and for the community. So thank you for coming. We look forward to working with you over the coming years. So as a five-year veteran of the district force, will you still have the uh, I, I do. Uh, for a shortened period, uh, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but yes, I, I, I still have many, many things to learn Massachusetts law in the lay of the land here. So. Mr. Mosher. So it's great to have you here. I'm glad things worked out for you and your family and your wife. Um, so we've had a lot of recent promotions. Uh, but the officers that were promoted have a lot, a lot of experience. So um, I think probably the experiences that you had in Virginia will be a little bit different, and it'll be good to bring that into our organization. And um, there's probably a little bit of uh, regional difference that, uh, that the team will help point out to you. But you got a great team to back you up, and um, appreciate that you're up here, and welcome aboard. Thank you very much, sir. <sighs> Great. All right, and I'll say the same thing. Thank you for both of you for coming in tonight. Happy to have you all come on board. Did, Falls Church is a much larger town, right? I mean, it's... Falls Church is the same size uh, population-wise, really? but it's uh, in a 2.2 square mile radius, so it's about 10 times smaller than Oh, Hopkins interesting. Now. So it's denser. That's uh, what it the difference is. Very dense area. Yeah, uh, okay. But similar... Not one, not the number of what are we chief? Two safest town in America, though. So, that's, <laughs> <laughs> so okay. Um, I think Falls Church was a little further down on that. <laughs> list, so. yeah, exactly. Okay. Well. That's right. So was one socket. Oh. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, we still brought him in. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, good. We're happy to have you both here. Again, I, you know, just to say, we think you all are very lucky. You can hear. We think very highly of the police force in town. Everyone thinks very highly of the police force in town. It's a great organization with great folks that runs really well. So, you know, come on board knowing you got a lot of community support behind you. Uh, a very, a, you're a very high opinion held by you by the community. And please make sure you live up to the <coughs> expectations of everybody. We're we're, we're a friendly town. Well, we're mostly a friendly town. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, that, that, that we like to keep it that way. So, Chief, any, any final words? Uh, Mr. Chair, through you, if uh, possible, we'd like to have the family present them and pin them with their uh, Yeah, well, let's make them officers first. Let's hire them first. And then okay. we'll, and we'll do it. <laughs> so. Just one last thing. I, yeah. uh, I can't say enough. Uh, the, uh, the opportunity that I have to, to promote on this department and hire outstanding candidates. I've been doing this for 28 years now, and I'm just... So happy with the level of talent that we have both on the department and that we're bringing in here. Well, given that we're hiring three officers a month, we should be safe. Yeah. <laughs> All right. With that, the chair will entertain a motion to appoint Brian Sanchioni and Alex Cruz Vergara as the newest members of the Hopkinton <coughs> Police Department. So moved. Second. Uh, we have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. So carries. Gentlemen, congratulations. Welcome to the Hopkinton Police Department. public form it gets much better. Sorry. One, two, three. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> Do you want a picture?
that was fun. All right. All right. How out of the evening? Item five, the Gateway Green Committee project update. This is a discussion item. Finley Perry and Peter Mezzet will provide a brief update to the board regarding the proposed beautification of the 495 North and Main Street median strip. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Uh, maybe the camera can catch this. This is an illustration of um, How can we do the that? green median strip, which is between the uh, eastbound and westbound uh, lanes, West Main Street, uh, under the 495 overpass, kind of the gateway to the community, hence the name Gateway Green Project. Uh, it's a privately funded uh, community beautification project that the selectmen blessed over a year ago. Uh, we've been working hard. Date. We have 12 donors. Um, <coughs> I'd like to thank some of these people tonight because this project was goal was to raise $120,000 uh, by spring or by April 1st, and we're just about there. Um, I want to thank Unibank, uh, Paul Mastriani, uh, for being two of the major donors. Uh, Select Energy with Ken Driscoll, who's Actually, idea this was in the very beginning, about three years ago. It was his brainchild. Uh, Perkin Elmer, Tech Sandbox. I got to thank Finn Perry, too. He slips under the radar screen way too much. Uh, Gorman Richardson Lewis Architects, Phipps Insurance, Mirick O'Connell, Price Chopper, Hopkinton Independent, and the Hayden Row Business Center are the 12 donors to date. Um, <laughs> we expect within the next month to be tying into the water supply for the irrigation and uh, trees to go into the ground in April. So this is the gateway to the community. We think it has many benefits. Uh, it's a beautification project, number one, but it also expresses the environment that people are coming into when they enter Hopkinton as being a good environment, safe environment. Uh, it's an environmentally friendly project. And we believe it will have somewhat of a ripple effect. So you'll see more things come down the road like this. Uh, the Board of Selectmen have also been behind this. Uh, sorry, not the Board of Selectmen. The, um, Hopkins Chamber of Commerce have been behind this as well. So I guess, Finn, did I miss anything? Well, you missed yourself. Yeah, uh, missed myself. This really the, the driving force here. You don't get in camera otherwise, Finn. Thank you. The driving force is uh, Western Nurseries and Peter Mezzard, who's the president there. And their contribution is huge, both in in terms of in-kind and financially. So um, it's just great to have this thing come together. I got involved in it back in November, and I said, we either got to do this or, or not, and we got to do it next year, meaning now. And the great thing about it is it's a very high-impact project, very low cost, relatively speaking, uh, privately funded, and it has to get done in a short time frame. So it's one of those wonderful projects of that nature. Peter's been fabulous on that. So we've had well, a we make winter. quite the team here because his persistence is unbeatable. So, <laughs> so <laughs> we, uh, we thank you all very much for your support. And I think the, the big thing is that there are, we have, in addition to the major contributions that Peter's mentioned, there are numerous smaller contributions. We're advertising the independent, looking for additional contributions. 5, 10, 25, 150, 250, whatever citizens, particularly at that end of town, who have to drive through that all the time, uh, it will be a transformative project. And we think it will add to highway safety, highway beautification, will increase property values, it will make employees feel more um, like they're coming into a community that cares. Uh, customers will feel that way. New residents will feel that way. And we just think it's sort of a... Uh, you know, like I say, low cost, high impact project, and we're very excited about it. Uh, we look for a groundbreaking, assuming we can get through the mass DOT process uh, promptly, and that's underway. Uh, we look for a groundbreaking as early as 1st of April, and uh, should be a May, April May project all up and done. So, thank you very much for the chance to talk. Thank you both for coming in. This is spectacular. I remember we talked about it a few years ago. It's Great to see a picture finally. Anybody any comments, Mr. Herr? So this starts at 495 and goes to South Street. Is that what I'm saying? Other way. Correct. The whole median strip. Is on the other side of 495 as well, or no? 
Yeah, the bridge is kind of in the middle. You kind of see the overpasses here. Right. So you have the Price Chopper South Street intersection on one side, and you've got the, the two yeah, gas stations. It comes all the way to Lumber Street. Well, whatever, where the median ends, the Almost gas stations. Almost to Lumber Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes from basically Lumber Street to South Street. It's about 1,500 yeah. linear Further feet. Further than the median, yeah. 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 That's awesome. It'll be when 51. It's done, when it's done, will the town maintain this? Does it need to be or will a private entity? We're going to make, we're trying to raise um, enough money in the initial round to cover the first three years of maintenance. We've already got enough to cover the installation, and what we have to go is really the three years of maintenance. So we're, we're close on that, too. There's no town cost on the maintenance. Yeah, I think that's a great deal. I appreciate, I appreciate that very much. Um, but with this, at some point, I have no problem with town helping either. Well, we may ask the town to fund the water that's used to water the plants, but that would be it, and it comes out to less than $1,000 a year for that. We have sort of a phase two on this, which uh, I think actually would really do some, uh, be pretty dramatic, and that would be to put some lighting, up lighting on the trees, and particularly up lighting on the bridges. Um, and uh, wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> and so uh, if, if we can... If we can raise enough money, uh, then phase two is uh, another year. So we're putting the sleeving in for uh, electric power and so That's forth at this point. That's awesome, friend. And anything, John, Mr. Major? I, I live down that way, and I, I'm looking forward to it. I, really, I wasn't aware of this until just a few months ago. And uh, that area with the development of Price Chopper and Maspinock Woods has, and, and the expansion of the intersection has lost a lot of trees. And I think having this break up that pavement and the intersection a little bit, I think will, you know, restore some of that, some of the feeling that was lost. So I'm very appreciative of this project. I think all you guys live on that side of town. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that I'm looking at. I don't go that way. I'm the only one. Oh, okay. so. Yeah, I, I, this is something that, that, that I've been watching since Ken made me go to lunch with him back when I was on the planning board uh, to start... Uh, help push this thing across but uh you know it's great thank you very much for stepping up and, and, and really pushing it and thank you very much for keeping it going it's it's going to make that that whole area look great and because there are a lot of towns that you get off the road and you and you and they they have a statement of uh of just like our vision statement right there you know it's a vibrant welcoming community and yeah. so we can we can really show it right. off as such so thank you very much thanks for pushing it uh, yeah, I mean, enough can't be said about the plans themselves and, and uh, what this is going to look like. Uh, how far are you from your financial goal for fundraising? About $15,000. 15000 Great. I think we'll get there. And um, how, how do people contact TOOM to make donations? There's a uh, website, www.gatewaygreenproject.org or com, I forget. Com. And they can go on there and donate. Uh, through PayPal, or you can write a check. It'll tell you where to send the check on that website awesome. as well. Great. Thanks, you guys. Go with a credit card to get free miles. It is dot .com. There you go. Right. Oh, dot .com. John just closed the gap for you. Yep. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming in. Anything else? And, and That's it. Just it's fabulous. I can't wait to be out there to see it. I'm very excited. Yeah. So. Yes, sir, Mr. Kamala. Honestly, on, on, on behalf of town staff, the, the, the organization resilience, patience, and kindred <coughs> spirit that this group has demonstrated has been an inspiration to all of us. Uh, we want to thank you for your efforts. There's a lot of effort that has gone into this, and I'm, I'm happy to see this happen. Thank you, Norman. Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks, Thanks. guys, for coming in. We'll see you hopefully April 1st, all right? All right. That'd be fun, yeah. All right, on to tonight's main event, budget working session. The Board of Selectmen will meet with town department heads to discuss the fiscal year 2017 operating and capital budgets. I will direct the board's attention to a memo we got earlier today with an agenda for tonight. Um, time, 6.45 for the facilities, 7 for the schools, 7.20 for DPW, 7.45 for police and fire, 8 for parks and rec, 8.30 for a host of um, activities, and then 9 o'clock is the last week. So, uh, and we'll try to stick to that, I think, to the extent possible. Um, do we want them to talk about capital requests at the same time? I guess we should. To the extent they have any capital articles, we should also have. Yes, sir, what? 
Yes, both. If yeah, you, that's what I'd like to do. Okay. Yes. So we'll have everyone talk to their operating budgets as well as the capital budgets. Do um, we did not get additional versions of the handouts from last week, um, but everyone should have them electronically, right? That's just Parks and Rec, which is for everybody. All right, well, I have mine. All right, so why don't we just go through this. Dave, you can, I mean, you can go at a fairly rate, high rate of speed, right? Sure. I mean, just, you know, things that don't change much, you don't need to go far on. <clears throat> um, uh, the only thing I'd say is, can you start off by telling me what's your department number? Uh, 410. 410. You can speak very fast, in fact. So. <laughs> sure, I'll go, f I'll go fast. Mr. Kamal, what? Anything else? Yeah, in, in fact, from <coughs> the last board discussion of the facilities and engineering uh, department budget, uh, there was an interest on the part of the board to better understand how the FY17 proposed budget addresses the ongoing maintenance and follow-up work that was identified right. in camp. Camp is the big issue, and then, Dave, any of the capital projects you need to speak to, you can you should cover as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't think you have any. Okay. No, I mean, f first, uh, um, the operating budget, um, you know, it's pretty pretty level funded uh, and level service. Um, there was a minor increase for water and sewer rates is pretty much the only thing I, I add. Um, we had a reduction in hours in one of the staff, so that's why... Personnel costs go down, but that was made up with contract services in the operating budget. So <clears throat> my operating budget pretty much is, is a minimal increase. What's the personnel expenses? Like, you really moved it up beyond what he even asked for. Why is that? You, I mean, you, the, the expenses, not personnel, the expenses. Yeah, as I think as Dave said, uh, he took advantage of the reduction in hours for one of the um, yeah. staff and redirected part of that funding to uh, pay for both contracted services as well as over time. In addition, what I've mentioned to the board <coughs> is uh, for the town to fund a full-time uh, custodian, mm -hmm. and this is in recognition of the two main facilities that we'll be adding to our store. So, uh, as Norman said, that, that, that's one of the initiatives, additional initiatives that is increased. Uh, it's not shown in this operating budget. Um, I think that's a future discussion, right? Decision. So, um, can you talk to the make camp, the maintenance program? Yeah. So how we're doing on that? Are we on track? You know, uh, all the. All yeah, the I'll give a, a real here. quick update. You know, in the packet, I had a you know, a, a quick few <coughs> sheets to try to update that. You know, 2012 is when the camp was finalized. I'm, I'm not sure. Up the only three of you were, were selectmen then. Um, the, the first summary sheet was the priority projects. Um, as of right now, the, the priority projects that were completed were the Elmwood School. Town Hall had three projects. Um, the Loop Road was done. Hopkins School had an emergency generator. Middle School did fire alarms and detection devices. Um, Elmwood School, um, oh, I said, I'm sorry, had the roof and the, the police was funded um, the schools haven't planned for the Elmwood paving yet or they, they were talking about some work on the White House so mm -hmm. um, and then again the PBC had determined there was three main three of the buildings DPW library town hall weren't meeting the needs um, okay. so DPW and library are now kind of new buildings so the priority projects and, and the the building projects have been um, funded and, and completed so um, okay so over the last three years all those projects have been completed another one of the uh, in the packet is you know um, my capital summary based uh, off of the camp projects the capital major projects out to tw 2021 um, and another one is is the larger spreadsheet is how we track all the projects that were listed in camp I coordinate with the schools. His, uh, his presentation. So I coordinate with the schools when projects get done um, and they're completed. So to, to date, we've done about four and a half million dollars worth of work that was listed in the original camp. Um, and there's more and more 
you know, th th those are what my capital summary projection out to 2021 is based off of. So you got nothing this year, but you got a lot of stuff next year. Yeah, I know. well, this year you was. You got $800,000 <laughs> of stuff next year. Um, More than that, yeah. actually. Yes. This year was, was more focused on, you know, there's no more emergency projects that needed to be done. Mm -hmm. um, so understanding and taking the, the, the board's directive to, you know, <clears throat> be as tight as possible. <laughs> Might not be the right term, but be as, you know, <clears throat> cognizant as possible to be sensitive to, to the budgets this year. So, Is there any of that stuff in 18 we should put in the budget this year if we have space? Yeah, honestly, I, I don't have any. It has to get done. Yeah, I don't have any pressing need to, to replace it okay. immediately. Um, okay. If 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 it's something you would like me to try to push forward a couple of the projects, you know, the fire station rooftop units are probably the most pressing thing, and maybe the boiler in the fire department. So, um, but they're still holding on. And okay, fine. Second floor, two fifty. get that done quickly. Next six weeks. Okay. Well, Steve. Um, there was a question last week about the, the maintenance of buildings. Um, just want to kind of just let the, the board know, facilities does track um, and, and perform, you know, regular maintenance on, on all the building equipment, the boilers, furnaces, rooftop. We, we would change belts, we change oils, um, and we're tracking that um, with spreadsheets right now. But we do, as part of our annual operating budget, maintain everything. Um, I don't know if there was any confusion on that part. I know, you know, in the past, when there wasn't, you know, six, seven years ago, it really wasn't a facilities department. A lot of that stuff wasn't being done. Um, maintaining the exterior of the buildings, cleaning the duct work, that kind of stuff. So it's all being tracked and, and <coughs> completed now as part of the operating budget. I think just to frame the question, I, I don't think it was that we worried it wasn't getting done. We just, you know, again, we had that period where we had to do all this catch-up work, and we don't, we, right. we've always said we don't want to do that again. So I just want to take this opportunity for us to get our periodic update of is it actually yeah, being done? I don't, think I've, ever, it is. I don't think I've ever told, you know, updated the board on actually what, what we do on a day-to-day -day schedule yeah. basis. So, um, no, it's good to, good um, to see. So it, there's it, nothing we're, in your mind we're way behind on or that is getting shortchanged? Or? No, we, we've, we've caught, up, caught up a lot. Um, no. Caught up a lot. We're covering a lot of stuff now. I think when the new buildings come online, it's going to be, it, it'd be, we'll be understaffed and we won't be able to, yeah. to maintain the same level of service that we are right now. So I will say you do a remarkable amount without you know, beneath the radar screen. I mean, I think <laughs> we keep busy. important to notice. <laughs> Did, were you going to say something, um, Mr. Kamal? Yeah. The, um, One that, um, in terms of process, Dave has actually centralized the uh, maintenance contracts for all the town buildings. So uh -huh. he's building some efficiencies through that process. And secondly, he's also working collaboratively with DPW, the schools, and Park and Red in the introduction of a wonderful tool called Facility Dude, and it can right. speak to that. Right. Uh, facilities Dude is going to kind of be version two of our facilities work request system, um, but it's going to be able to expand on the, the camp report that we have now. We just finished going through all the buildings again um, to assess all the building equipment and, and building systems. and. It gets down to the detail of every building, every room, and every piece of equipment in every room. And, and it was just finished and assessed by poor condition, fair condition. Um, and what it's going to lead to is a formal capital improvement plan for uh, out to maybe 10 or 20 years. So my ultimate goal would, would to be a, to have a capital improvement plan presented at town meeting and passed at town meeting so that we have, you know, a much better forecast on what capital projects are moving forward um, and, and it'll, it'll really streamline that process and really you know you'll have more information than, than you really want to look at um, down to replacing rugs and, and fans and everything else so it's come a long way and they collaborated with DPW on purchasing the software this year so uh, that worked out well. Thanks. Mr. Marjorie any questions? I know that was a that was a good overview. Um, I'm glad to see the program's in place. It's it's on track. It's being adhered to. Mr. Katina. Yeah, this is this is real clean. I I, I want to learn a little bit more about facilities, dude. If I can, I want to run my projects like this. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Uh, I think this is put together very well. Thank you. Can you 
you talk a little bit about the uh, downtown improvement project, where that fits in, and what monies are involved with any? Um, my operating budget has really nothing to do with the downtown project. Um, you know, I'm managing as part of engineering the police station parking lot projects moving forward, and that's going to break ground probably this spring. Um, we're moving the downtown project ahead with the grant that we got from MassWorks. Um, we're pushing the consultant to finish 100% design by July 1st. Um, right now, we're we just had a meeting with Eversource, um, so we may have another walk walk through of the project with the utilities with the implementation um, of the separated bike lane I know I've been talking with the town manager that we, we got to get the plan in front of the selectmen again if not at the next meeting the, certainly the next one so that we can bring an update on the, the realignment of the intersection um, what the preliminary plans look like for it, trying to implement the the bike lanes on both sides of the road we, we said it's a it's a challenge so we, we wanted to present to the selectmen you know we're the biggest challenges to, to move that part forward so um, but as from a facilities in a budget standpoint not not really connected okay. Good. thank you this is um, how much <clears throat> Dave first of all thank you very much this is a great presentation and thank you. I for one I can honestly say that since you've come on board I feel much more reassured that that the things that need addressing are being addressed and uh, I know that you're on top of this stuff you've done you've done yeoman's work so I appreciate that thank you um, how much how much was the repair to the fire station roof the roof uh, the original appropriation was four hundred thousand and that was construction and design and everything and uh, you know as I think it was mr. Paleco uh, mentioned you know fiscal 17 looks you know relatively empty of, of any of these repair type projects but then we start getting into fiscal 18 and I'm looking at the the maintenance on the fire station over the next couple of years and we're putting uh, you know another close to seven hundred thousand dollars into that um, I think the shocking thing to me it's probably just because I have no clue on costs of this stuff but five hundred thousand dollars for HVAC for the fire station yeah, we have a, um, as part of the roof project, we, we had a mechanical consultant do an assessment of them. They, they, they have a lot of rooftop units there, and, and they're large rooftop units. And it's replacing all of them. So, um, you know, they probably go to $40,000 $40, a piece. <clears throat> um, and you start adding just up the, you know, just your mechanic, just your equipment costs. It's, you know, to probably close to two, three hundred thousand. Well, how, how old is the current system? They're over 20 years old. Are they? Most of them. Uh, and, and a lot of them got damaged. It was been a hailstorm sometime before I got here. Um, so a lot of them have hail damage on the on the fins. Um, but you know the 500,000. Well, part of the the camp put um, another line item into facilities for engineering. So before we actually submit an article to town meeting, that'll be much much more fine tuned. Mm -hmm. um, so. 500 is just kind of a placeholder that's that's my engineer being safe <laughs> yeah okay so then another thing that I noticed is that over the next couple of years uh, fiscal year 2018 and 19 we're putting another I don't know two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or so uh, into the built fire station mm. um, not so much looking to you but I guess looking to mr. Kamalo um, is that something that we can justify um, can can the board at some point get an explanation of what that's even being used for is it something that we can get more use out of or is it something that we can get rid of um, and I'd just like to open that conversation at some point um, I'm sorry it's a fair question thank for you future discussion all right uh, and then last how much over the last couple of years since we started down the road with the camp have we put into the town hall 
uh, envelope preservation, restoration, recreation. Bless you. Um, boy, I'm trying to add up the the con it's it's probably half a million dollars. Half a million. Close to and that. and I'm adding up over the next four years after seventeen. Uh, looks like we're looking at another eight hundred thousand dollars. This is going to be a new building. In, in fact, through the chair, Dave, you, you may also want to point out to the board some of the um, projects that you've been able to move forward here at Town Hall without uh, having to rely on uh, additional appropriations, <coughs> which, which may oh, actually help bring down the. But yeah, I mean, we've projects. we've been um, able to, you know. Start replacing some of the the, the carpets. Um, replace some of the, the ceiling uh, on the second floor here. Um, we 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 were looking at some. We were able to hire an, an architect to do some options for for um, updating this this selectman's room, which it, it's in need of. Um, so a lot of the you know call it aesthetic. It's not not building yeah. system stuff. We've been been able to kind of update. We updated room, uh, meeting room 211. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, the, the basement project um, allowed us to update the basement bathrooms. Um, so those bids came in low enough so that we were able to add that work into the, the project. Mm -hmm. um, so some of the, the original numbers here um, were based on the original camp. So some of the scope will come down, I'm, I'm sure. Okay. So. Yeah, and I'm not trying to be critical of you. I mean, no, I'm not <laughs> I'm taking that at all. It's just, uh, it is. It's, uh, I've um, but talked it's, to Norman yeah, it's about really it. kind of raising the awareness of, of uh, how much the buildings cost to keep up, and and also when we start looking at this uh, in union with the new buildings that are coming online, uh, you know, to be built soon, and then coming online, you know, we've got some expensive years in front of us. So. Yeah. There's yeah, also a point to point out that all that stuff is not obviously a done deal, right? It's all going to get discussed individually, and mm -hmm. we've always had these kind of lists, and they tend to they tend to stretch out, right? Yeah, it's just so, the elevator. Yeah. But that's all I have. I just Thanks, want to be excited. Okay. Yep. Dave, thank you very much. Like I said, I, I think you do a terrific job. I mean, with, you know, without much visibility. So I'm glad you came in and talked to me about your budget. <coughs> I think what you're doing is great, and I really do appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you. Is there a way to turn the heat down here a little bit? <laughs> we can open the windows. Oh. The sun got really hot in here. Right. That's part of the, the yeah, MEP, MEP project. Probably a fire. Gonna burn it right down. Yeah. All right, seven o'clock, and I see the school folks here. Uh, schools. You want to come up and talk to the school budget? I actually have some information um, because I heard from Ellen that there have been questions about the school bus parking. Um, I don't know if you want to see that or if you want to Sure, wait. we'll take anything. That, that came up on, at Tadao yesterday. Yeah, exactly. Thanks. This is one for Norman Small. I don't know. Oh. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Want to just dive right in? We no, we don't have anything. We have the summary. Um, Forty million nine oh two nine oh one, and that's all we have in front of us. So, Mr. Polico, are you looking for a presentation? I was coming with the understanding that I was going to be responding to questions. I do have our summary that we gave to the school committee. Yeah, if you could run if through you the summary, that would be great. If you do, could you? Sure. Can, can we you, throw it up on the screen? Can we throw it up? I know you've, I know you've had you know, two, of the, two of us come yeah, to, no, your, I'm come happy to your meetings, but I, um, I, I think it would be good to kind of run through it great. At, at a high level. Sure. And I guess you guys, I'll go to you first to, if you have any comments you want to make about the thing or anything. Mm. Did you rotate this in the. You, uh, you got to unlock it first of all. 
Is it locked? No, you, you, know, you, you know you do the swipe up on the bottom to unlock the screen. It's probably locked so it won't rotate. Right. Yeah, and see a little lock button on the rotation right. lock? There. Uh. Unlock that. And then when you drop it back down, it'll, it'll rotate. Or you can just do that. You can't see it from there. I don't know why I'm going to show this. Do you want me to lock off? Just start? Yeah, just fire it off, sure. If you're this could okay. take a while. Well, so you know the bottom line. Um, <coughs> percent increase, 4.495%. Can you just um, maybe talk your way through? Yeah, just talk your way through and then we'll catch up So we wanted to talk about the um, budget highlights specifically related to strategic initiatives. Yep. Um, and so what we worked to do, uh, the process that we went through this year was to really ask the, the various schools and the departments, special education, technology, et cetera, to bring to us um, their priorities. Uh, and then once we knew what the total was, uh, we were able to work together as a team to highlight what's this year's priority. What is something that cannot wait? Um, all of these things are things that we want to be able to do at some point. But we worked as an admin team to really be able to say, you know, this is something that we really need to focus on. And, and it was based on our data and our achievement. So staffing, uh, increased staffing to support priority initiatives included reading coaches, English language learner teachers that is increasing our population. 65, we now have six, 65 English language learners. Um, who need a variety of supports. So depending on, on how limited their English is, they might need 90 minutes a day of instruction. Um, then elementary adjustment counselors, additional uh, behavior support teachers, um, and, and additional maintenance. Um, I wanted to point out, though, that as we looked at staffing, we also were looking at what can we staff differently. And an example that I can talk about that, that is really clear to people is the reading coach role. So we, in bringing on reading coach, are actually replacing the current structure, which would be a reading support person um, that would be working with students and looking to bring in a reading coach to work with teachers to be able to increase skill sets around there. Um, additionally, another highlight was looking at school <laughs> facilities that support effective instruction. And a couple that we're very excited about at the high school um, was an additional physics lab because as we increase uh, our STEM opportunities at the high school and really refurbishing the library to make it much more of a learning space um, for students. The middle school engineering classroom was something that we needed to create um, as part of our plan and then just basic maintenance, painting, carpeting, lockers, things like that. Um, we really are looking to provide a targeted professional development plan. So as we bring in different initiatives, different programs, we need to make sure that teachers get the support that they need, both in materials and in training. So at the elementary level, we're bringing in a foundations um, for K-1-2 and, and a plan that is aligned with that to make sure that teachers can use and support the, the programs that we provide to them. Ongoing meeting the needs of high learners, uh, meeting the needs of high needs learners continues to be a priority for us, um, as well as a technology budget that attracts and sustains a high functioning technology support staff. So every district is competing for the same pool. And we want to make sure that in the budget presentation that we were had from the technology department, that there's a plan in place to support the people that we have working for us, a uh, high functioning team. Um, and the, the last one, the final one, and not the least, mo least important one, is using assessment results to establish high expectations. And I want to just say that that's an easy thing for us to say. Um, but using those results and not waiting and not just collecting the results is what's been really, but what's been really different about the work that we've been doing. Um, so we talked about the enrollment projections. We're happy to say that consistent with NESDEC, uh, predictions we're pretty we're pretty flat overall right we see we see growth in some areas and not so much in other areas so that the overall totals are not that different than they, they they've been this year um, sorry can we hook her up now 
you, we talked about the budget recommendation. The budget recommendation between payroll and expense, interestingly enough, FY16, 83% um, of the budget was payroll, 82% was expense, uh, was for FY17, 82% is payroll, expense is just off that other percent. So pretty consistent with what we've been looking Sorry, Kathy. at. Josh, do you have a connector so she can plug that MacBook oh. in? Sure, yeah, do you need access? So I could. I'm just about done um, okay. with this piece of it, but um, if you want, um, you need to plug if, in or if you have a if USB the, drive. So I, I'm like sorry, I didn't come prepared to okay. do that. Well, we're gonna have to switch to a MacBook. But I can friendly, definitely so send this to all of okay. you, or um, I could have sent it to you so that you could project. Okay. Why don't we just go to questions from the board? Okay. Since you all were the liaisons, and also I want to talk about the capital articles too. Sure. Yeah, we're very we're prepared so to do let's that. Let's do the operating budget first. Do you have quite you you two are the school liaisons? Do you have pretty, questions? Pretty familiar comments? with it. I don't have any. Anything the board should know, in your opinion? I don't think so. I, I mean, probably one of the key points was um, Dr. Cloud mentioned using using data and then taking that data to adjust the curriculum and the programs for the students on an individual basis. There's some investment in personnel to that, correct? There's some what, sorry? Some investment in personnel to facilitate that, right? So there's a couple of new positions. Maybe you want to speak to that because they add to the... So the, there is the data management individual, and, and really what that is is the, in, the person that can help take all the data that we gather and, and translate it into reports that can then be used by the administration. Um, and administration is doing a lot of that. We've been talking at length about what assessments are useful to us. We met again about it just today. If we're spending too much time testing and it's taking away from the amount of time that we can spend teaching, we want to talk about that. So if there's somebody that can take the data and translate it into a report that we can then get our hands on and then can go and work with the teachers on what does this report mean about the focus of instruction, that's a really useful position to us. Um, we did that again. We did that by reducing in other areas, um, as, as you will recall I reduced a central office position and it was a curriculum director position because this was the work that was more targeted on student learning um, and we knew that by growing our assistant principal positions over time both for the evaluation system um, and for this the curriculum work that we have distributed the curriculum work more consistently across buildings now as opposed to central office and I really believe that's where it should be because we know that if teachers are part of the curriculum development, they're going to own it, as opposed to somebody creating some document that is shared somewhere that people may or may not use. So as we've gone through looking at meeting the needs of, of our teachers and our students, it's by constantly asking ourselves, how can we do things more efficiently? And the example that I give you is by reducing a position at central office, which basically funded that position, as opposed to just adding on more positions. I, I guess aside from that, the only the only real real point I have about this budget or, or point of concern or whatever is how much of that is taken up in, in payroll and benefits, right? Versus what's what's left over for actually implementing. How much of it is taken up with payroll benefits, did you say? Payroll or? and benefits, right? Contractual yeah. obligations that yeah. we have around payroll. So out of the percentage Right. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's consistent with what we see in most school districts. I think that the business is one of teachers providing the instruction to to the students. Um, that's the main. You know, I will always say that we can, we really can do, we can teach without the most up to date materials. The, that's a bonus. But we can't teach with the very best of instruction. We we need to have the very best instructors that we can have. That's what we really need. And we need to continue to build that and to support them and to keep them here um, by giving them what they need to be successful. Mr. you? Uh, I mentioned it last week in, in, my, in the one evening I was able to attend. Uh, I saw several examples of the mindset that Dr. McLeod is describing in terms of how they approach the budget and uh, they adjusted staffing where they needed to, and if they didn't need some funds, they gave those back to the superintendent to do else, you know, to work with elsewhere. So, uh, I thought it was the right approach, and I appreciate it very much. And I don't have any questions. Mrs. Histori. Yeah, um, you know, first of all, I, from, based on based on the comments that uh, Mr. Moser and Mr. Herr have come back with over the last couple of months, um, you know, they've been very impressed with the process that you guys have been going through, and. 
Um, you know, they're very they're very comfortable with it. Um, I guess one question I have is, you know, the last couple of years, we always like to hear about the strategic initiatives that are coming through, and we also like to hear what the results of those initiatives are. Do you have anything you can highlight for us on past strategic initiatives that have been funded and uh, how they're how they're benefiting the students at this point? So I have some preliminary, um, and I haven't got hard data here tonight, but we certainly have some preliminary trends to support, for example, the co-teaching initiative and the full-day kindergarten initiative. And we met, I just met tonight with um, the, the center and Elmwood school principals, and we were talking about the numbers of kids needing reading support leaving first grade, so now this would be the second year of full-day kindergarten, into, se into second grade, she said are, are probably seven or eight students versus 24. Um, so those results are preliminary. They're, they're what we expect. We're not surprised by them. Um, but last year I provided, we provided uh, a student achievement end of year report for the school committee where they asked us to do this very thing, which was to provide some evidence that these initiatives that we've been supporting um, as a school committee are that you've got some evidence that they're being successful. We look at the reduction in the numbers of students with, with increasing behaviors, for example. Um, this is something we've really been addressing, and I know from the Superintendents Association, this is something, social emotional learning, this is something that people are struggling with across the state. And so putting things in place like the adjustment counselor at an elementary level so that we can meet kids' needs before they get to the point where it, it, they're out of control. Um, so that those are just some ad hoc types of, of examples for you, but I'd be happy to provide uh, a more thorough, you know, yeah, no, data-driven report. No, that's, no, that's, uh, that's great, and I appreciate it. And I know that uh, the first one that you mentioned, the co-teaching, is something that we've, we've talked about in the past, and uh, I remember when you were bringing that up the first time and, and kind of projecting how that was going to ben benefit everybody. And obviously, the most important of the goals and the most important of the results is uh, that of the students themselves and, mm -hmm. and the fact that they're saying that, you know, now they're seven or eight out of a class, you know, coming out and needing more, more assistance. It's fabulous. Um, does that, how, how does that translate into fiscal benefit? Uh, so we'll have a significant reduction in the numbers of students <coughs> needing special education services. Mm -hmm. Because that's where you know the gap starts to, to grow at those yeah. early years. Functionally, yeah, I understand that. Right. I'm just one, when I say how, I'm talking dollars and cents. So. Right. <laughs> so when we have a reduction of the needs for students with special education, then we're going to have less need for that number of, of teachers, for example, because there'll be fewer kids to address those needs. And is it something where uh, you know, for comfort's sake, I guess, uh, we wait a couple of years to see a trend uh, in these results before we start? actually reducing in that area of the budget? Yeah, we, we, sh we should be able to start seeing a trend in the upcoming FY17, because that's year three now, uh, and that's typically how long it takes to see those results. But another example I'll throw out, because I know, you know we talk a lot about early initiatives. We're gonna, you're going to hear us talking a lot about science this year, because we know the next-gen standards are coming, we need to prepare for them, and we know from our MCAS results that we are not doing nearly as well in science as we are in ELA and math. So you're going to start hearing, the school committee has already started plans for science, how we're going to introduce science at the elementary level, and then how we're preparing for curriculum changes, and we're already making changes at the middle school next year in terms of delivery of instruction around science, um, that we will be preparing to meet and respond to data that we're not happy with. Um, so that's another example of how those initiatives are tied to success plans. Right. Thank you. Mr. Coutinho. It's funny, for, for me, it is this, the, you know, the good news and the bad news. You know, the, the good news was that um, uh, Mr. Her and Mr. Mosier were very pleased with it. But then when we look at the, the budget and seeing that it's, that it's going up almost like $1.8 million. And I remember just a few years ago, the budget going up 1.8 was, oh my God, I can't believe it's going up so much money. But, you know, what gets me nervous is that uh, is that we're getting used to that now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping that some of these initiatives might catch on. Mm -hmm. But then again, it really looks like there's only about, you know, 13 or 15% of the budget that you actually, of, of 17, work with. that right. you actually get to work I with. I mean, unless we start reducing personnel and increasing class size, those are always things that we don't want to talk about, but mm -hmm. that's always a place that 
we have to think about. Um, if we want to be able to maintain the level of extracurricular that we provide to our students, if we want to be able to maintain the class size that we as a district and as a school committee feel is so important to our success, um, then those are places that we have avoided going while we've tried to continually improve program. Um, but I, I also would like to thank um, Mr. Mosier and Mr. Herr for coming. It was just another meeting for you to be at in the evening. And we, were, we felt it was so important that you have a thorough understanding of our process. Um, and as liaisons to the Board of Selectmen, it was hugely beneficial to us to not only have you there, but have you at the table. Um, your questions made me, anyway, go back with my team and really, because your questions came from a place where you didn't have the background that the school committee has. So if, those, if you had those questions, we know that a lot of other people are going to have the same questions. Um, and we really appreciated um, your thoughtfulness and just being present. So. I think yeah. it's made the process much better. And my, my only other uh, um, comment is that I was glad to hear that, that we have flat enrollment because that's yeah. one of the things that's been in the papers all over the place. Oh, my goodness, with all the development in Hopkinton, the yeah. enrollment's going up and yeah. it's going to cost the schools a lot more money. But again, that's why I was surprised to see the, uh, the, the 1.7 uh, number. And I was, I was actually yeah. hoping to see So it's it overall over. flat, but for example, we have class size of 25 and 26 students in third grade this year. That, that's way too many. That's five too many. Um, and the reason it was that way is that we weren't expecting, just in terms of the way it, it fell out when, with, with kids moving in. So in next year's budget, we've, we've budgeted for an increased third grade teacher to help with those numbers. So it overall, but it depends on the school. Um, center, as we know, is bursting at the seams. So it depends on where we have move out space and, and empty classrooms. Um, and right now, those two schools are, there's, there's no capacity there. Um, but I, we were also pleased to see that overall, we have some room. And that's in the uh, strategic initiatives for the um uh, for the reading, it sounds great because you know, the, the, uh, to save on the special education numbers later on are going to be—that's going to be huge. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just a couple questions. So, um, uh, Kathy, you talked about the the people. You know, I mean, again, I get it. The budget's all people. That's what schools are. Um, but the whole paying for the best and all that stuff. How you know? Tell me. You know, how do you know? How do we know they're the best? How do we confirm the best? How do we keep the best? Can you just, you know, how do we train them more? Can you talk about yes. employee evaluation, retention, you know, enhancement, right. whatever the right words are? So, some of this is a little sensitive to talk, uh, you know, so I'll, I'll, I'll be oh. as straightforward as I can. Um, first of all, we have three years, so when teachers are non-professional, during which time we can non-renew. And we can non-renew within the evaluation system or not without it. We, we simply can non-renew that individual. Mm -hmm. um, and our practice has been to keep only the very best. Um, but with a lot of support, so teachers who may be in their first year, we get it, but we, if we see the potential there and we can provide the support that they need to be successful, we're going to do that. Um, if at the end of their third year or sometimes at the end of their second, we know that, that maybe they're not the very best we could do, we, we, we don't hesitate to act on that. That's the first piece. The second is around the evaluation system itself, um, and we know that the vast majority of our teachers are going to be proficient within that evaluation system. They're part of the goal setting. It, it's great in that sense because teachers look at themselves and they, they set goals for themselves that are supported by the administration and then they work to achieve the goals and they're required to be collecting evidence towards those goals. Actually there's 33 elements within the evaluation system that they are required to be collecting evidence on. So it's, it's, it's a lot. Um, but working with the administrative team to help uh, provide targeted professional development in areas where teachers have self-selected that they need help or if through the evaluation process administration feels that there are areas where they need to improve, um, then that can happen as well. This is far different than the way even within three years ago it used to happen, which was you went in one time, if you're a professional status, it was once every two years. I observed your lesson, wrote you up, and we were done for another two years. So that's how the evaluation system is helping us all to improve. And we model it. I model it myself 
with the school committee publicly in terms of my goal setting and my evaluation. The administration models it for their teachers. We're all using the same system. So we all choose goals in areas in which we know that we need to get better at. So there are um, more frequent evaluations of teachers yep, nowadays in the more classrooms? Absolutely. I mean, we're required. There's not a set number, and that, that's good, too, because teachers where there may be more concerns, the administration will spend more time there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and so way more often. Again, it used to be once every two years, and now it's, it's multiple times. We're required to do unannounced observations, and we're, we're required to um, keep all of that in documents. We use Baseline Edge that teachers have access to. Um, it's a very involved system, and I believe a very useful system. But then the third part of this that I want to address, and I think is probably maybe the most important part of it, is really developing teacher leadership and working with teachers to have them be part of the solution when you talked about looking at data and what does the data tell us and, and where do we need to improve. The way our administration approaches that task is to have teachers be part of that discussion and, and help us to identify those areas and then work within their team. Um, so that teachers are not feeling that we're waiting, that it's an I gotcha, but rather it's a joint effort to, for, the, for the purposes of continual improvement. And um, it's a culture shift, mm -hmm. and we're working hard at it, and, and I feel like we're making, we're making progress. Okay. Thank you. That's helpful, Mr. Floyd. Yeah. Um, but what's the, um, in that first three years, what's the renewal rate? Oh, I don't know the answer to that. That's a great question, though, I can find out from, uh, from we, we HR. I'll let you know. Um, can we switch to the capital projects? For sure. A okay. Um, uh, a couple of things. I, I, I just want to understand some of these. You didn't go for the turf field feasibility study, can we? Or did you? Did you want that or not? So can I update you on that? Um, there was a meeting today between. Um, so Mr. Cargill had had contact, approached me to see whether or not you know I would approve using athletic funds. Uh, to fund a feasibility study. They met with um, Gail Associates, Kathleen Herval. Mm -hmm. um, one of the coaches, they met just today. One of the coaches was there, um, Al Rogers, Eric. Um, and the purpose of the meeting was to look at fields four and five. So Al Rogers has provided as built on those particular fields. Um, because there's discussion about where this may or may be. They are what? The var that f four is the Behind, varsity? Behind, be below the football field. The two ones below the football Soft field. Softball, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's four and five. Um, <laughs> the idea of this study that Gail is doing is to provide an estimate for design. So the number that you see on the capital would be the design, $100,000 to design the potential turf field. This is not feasibility. So you wouldn't do the varsity football field. You're going to leave that horrible thing the way it is, and you're going to do fields four and five? So what I'm saying to you <laughs> is that that's, that's the design piece. We don't yeah. have the answer to that. Okay. And as many times as this has been discussed in the community, and I've heard it in so many different places, I think the problem is that we haven't done a thorough, we haven't had a thorough committee looking at design to see what makes the most sense. And your question so, is, is needs to loaded, be. but yeah. Right. Okay. So that's where we are, that the money there is it, the, the, we want to get. This is for the design work. Design. Okay. Could I ask yeah, a question? Go ahead. Yeah, please. So oh, I don't understand, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not clear as to why we're talking about fields four and five when the community and everyone that travels in the TVL uh, goes and plays football or lacrosse or girls uh, lacrosse, boys yeah, lacrosse, the whatever, they're playing on the varsity field that is a turf field. Mm -hmm. Four and five is not on anybody's mind in Hopkinton. Why are we talking about four and five? I, so, Mr. Herr, you and I, we have talked about this, and people, I've had and so we many. We talked about four and five. We talked about This four. was the first I heard of it today. The problem, I think, is that we need to have a broader conversation. So we hear from different groups who are interested in a turf field, and I've been trying for two years now to have a, a larger group, to have all of the, the different people that have, would have an interest in having a common conversation about the potential for a turf field in this town. And so we have different levels of interest. Um, I think a shared project is the way to go. Yeah. Uh, this group was, was simply, they were looking with the school lens on. But if there's a better way of looking at it, I think that we would welcome that. I think that we should be doing it together. And I know that everybody has a lot more 
knowledge about this than I do. I, I have no knowledge about turf fields. See, I think um, the consensus has been widely held that we should take the, the varsity, you know, whatever it is, the football yep. field, the one between the track, and make that a turf field. Because it's horrible, it's this. And, and that's and the I, only one you'll get support to put I, a turf And I field think, I and mean, we've thought, I think, you know, that would get very high level of support in the community. I, I mean, not that I have anything so, against four and five, but again, I don't know you're going to get the use there, um, uh, you know, just because of the stands yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to, I will get, find, I will okay. ask those questions of this committee, and, and because I don't think that they've gone there yet. They so just so can I make, uh, what I, think I would we'd do, like to go for this, but I think we, you know, I think, I think in our minds it was field three. Go ahead. Field I would three. ask, I would say, this is what we want to do and tell those that are looking at four and five that we want to look at the varsity field. I don't, I mean, the entire community has weighed on, weighed in on this with me over the, not the entire, a lot of people have weighed in on this, I hear about this over several, several years. Okay. And four and five has never come up. So if, if some individuals want to do four and five, that's nice. The community wants to do the football field. Okay. And if we don't do the football field, we're not going to talk about any of it. Right. I opinion. will give that feedback to this committee, um, and I will, I'll ask to meet with that group of people to ask these questions um, and find out how far along they are, and then get a really solid number for design. I think we'd be interested in taking that forward if we okay. had the opportunity to. Thank you. Um, so just I want to point out, that's actually not in the budget request as of now, but, but it's because I think we didn't quite know what it was. So I think having heard your explanation, having now had at least a, a, an initial conversation, I think we'd very much like to go for that if there was an opportunity. Okay, yeah, I mean, I'll get that however, information. It's your, it's your field, obviously. Sure. And in fact, yeah, sure, chair, Mr. Kamal. If, if at all it's possible to get both the design and construction um, costs uh, as soon as possible, I think that, that would be a way uh, to help move the project forward. Sure. Okay. Second one, um, <laughs> system-wide security upgrades. Every time, every mm -hmm. year this comes up. I know. Is there, a, is there a bunch more detail we can get about this so we can know what I can. Buying? I can give you more detail. Yeah. Can you, can you, if you want to talk to them, that'd be great, but can you also send it to us? Mr. Kamala, sure. what? <coughs> yes. I just wanted to, be make, to make sure that uh, the information we're discussing in public is information that we can discuss in public. This piece is, yes. Well, Thank I, you. I will point out. It, it's going to be in the budget. I mean, anyone in the town has a right to ask about it, and I don't think there's, a, there's an executive session for town meeting opportunity. So, okay. So there, um, we had a security audit done by BCM a few years ago, and this is phase two of that audit. Phase one included the dual entry. The locks and the... Uh, and, and cameras. The phase two of this um, was really the perimeter doors. And so right now we have an, an alarmed building, right, on the main doorways. But we don't for perimeter doors. So if we have propped doors, um, it kind of defeats the purpose or somebody going out a wrong, enter, a wrong exit. We know that security breaches happen by people not coming in the main entrance and we want to be able to maintain security around the perimeter. So this next phase involves perimeter, perimeter um, wiring. Um, around the doors, and that's that's the majority of it. Okay, fine. And then um, uh, uh, system-wide technology upgrades, is that something we're going to have a conversation about in conjunction with the, the yeah. Josh maybe or something? So for, yeah, yeah. Um, as we know, there was a joint. That right, exactly. We, we were really asking. excited about the joint working with the town, and yep. then that last year, because we had some changes, um, the schools went ahead with their side of that. This has to do with a new, a new um, student information system that would replace iPass, it would replace Atlas, which is our curriculum base, and it would, it would provide a, a better interface for parents around grading. Um, so the majority of that cost on the, on the school side but it would be around a, a new student information system to be put in place next year. I know there's a committee that's in place. They have, they have it down to three different systems and they're looking at, okay. um, they're evaluating that. But I just wanted to say that I, I know the schools would be delighted to join forces with the town um, and work together as we have in the past. Oh, I, that'd be great. I, that wasn't what I meant. I, oh, just okay. didn't, I didn't know if it was something you'd plan. I, I think I was saying I didn't know if you'd plan in conjunction with them, but it's all schools, it sounds It like. is all it's schools. All yeah, we Fine. hadn't had okay. that opportunity. And then my final question is the bus parking lot. Yes. What do we pay, what do we pay right now a year for bus parking? I don't know. It's not that we pay. In my head, it's 100 grand. What? 
It's not that we pay for bus here. parking. It's that we lose the excise tax, so okay. which is about thirty or forty thousand. You were not correct, but the total amount of savings if we brought the buses in is two fifty. Wait, two fifty. Sorry, sorry. That's site development. This Hold is on. site development. I think it's like one. This isn't it. It's in the memo from Ralph. Okay. I had it was 100 grand. That's why I'm trying to figure. I mean, this is like a three-year payback. I don't know. The memo from know. Ralph, it was 100. But this isn't a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. It had to do with excise tax yeah. and. That's yeah, so I think the number that you're referring to, that's over, it's like around 100,000. That was the excise tax and the gas savings and additional time for our drivers and because they need so to that drive back. Total is 100. I mean, this strikes me as like a three or you know less than a five-year payback. I don't know why this isn't a no-brainer. Just dropping this onto the property right now. I, th I thought that the question that was being posed of me is is where did that number come from the um, the three hundred twenty? I got the, I got no, the no, number. No, 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 I, no, so here's the question, no, no, which fine. is it's not it's not in the in the current yeah. you know, and I just want to. Because I just we were thinking of Tudor Irvine, yeah. and we don't want to step on that committee. The committee. Right? I mean, that committee has to decide what they're doing with that property. Certainly, we that's had our why. first meeting last night. That was brought up as a use for that property. But I got to tell you, that's not. That's not a no-brainer for them. They're not like, oh, yes, definitely. That's So, so that we can't put it in and say that's where it goes because there's a committee to plan that site. Well, again, we could appropriate for it, however, and then, and then plan it. I mean, you can appropriate for it within, I assume, right? I mean, we have the town planner here. <laughs> Couldn't we appropriate for this thing with, with some general concept of where it's going to go and nail it down later? I mean, wouldn't it? I just don't think Tadar is going to take forever to get done. I mean, it, there's not a lot of logical places to put this, right? I mean, it isn't like you're going to drop it in the far southern end of the property well, or I, something. I think the amount that's budgeted or that, that was being requested for it is actually with a specific location, with a specific driveway Correct. where it comes off. And the driveway's already there as part of the plan. Right. And I so think the, the last paragraph in that cover letter that I gave yeah. you, he's, he's talking about it being escalated to start. If they right. can do it at Three the years. same time as they're doing clearing for the school, there's a savings there. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, this strikes me as just remarkably rational to do. Well, um, I think that. So you're in favor of it, it's, or are you oh, in favor of absolutely. it? Absolutely. We're in favor of it, yes. Okay, so we have to talk about what we well, want to put in the Well, yeah, and, and I appreciate the recognition that, yeah, that Tadaro or Irvine property, there is a committee. We're supposed to be looking at this kind of long term and what can we do short term that won't affect our yeah. uh, flexibility as we get long term. Um, you know, this is the kind of thing with such a short ROI. You know, it seems we can we can pretty readily acknowledge that we're not going to be building another school within the next five years. Right. Um, and so, if we can do something, even if it ends up being temporary, you know, it might make sense. You showed this up in ten years, you still made money on it. Right. I mean, right. it's like it's 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 just not. Well, to the chair, it, it's it's a gravel parking lot. We can put anything on it afterwards. Right. Do we okay. want? So, all right. So, all right. So, you're in favor. The board can talk about whether we want to put it in, but you're Absolutely in favor. That's why I want to understand. Does anyone else have any questions for the school committee yeah, on either I, operating budget or the capital? I have request? one more. The um, another new track <coughs> didn't two years ago. Didn't we just sixty-two thousand uh, dollars? Or actually, three years ago, we were going to do one. It got stopped. And then last year, there was a uh, two years ago, there was a another sixty odd thousand dollar tractor. Yeah. You know, is, the, is are we? You know, is there something that DPW might have? Do we are we doubling up on on equipment? Do we? So this is the tractor that basically is the one that we use for maintaining all of our fields, and so the athletic fields, etc. Um, and I know that this was based on a replacement plan that Mr. Rogers has in place in terms of vehicle replacement that I think has been vetted through. Um, I don't know. CIC. There we are. We've looked at this for years, and we've never. Um, so EPW to replace nineteen uh, nineteen ninety nine. Nineteen ninety nine. So it's basically, ba you know, in terms of the starting the cost of starting to maintain it based on the age of the tractor, et cetera, and how much we use it in the summer. It's it's out there every single day. Okay. Are there has has there been discussion? Are there and are there economies that we can recognize in uh, collaborations between schools, parks and rec, and DPW on field maintenance management? and all of that. We've looked at this for the 10 years I've been doing this and never <laughs> yeah, found but, a satisfying. But, but we tried to go down this path pretty aggressively <laughs> every, about every other year eight years ago yeah. and didn't get very far. It doesn't work. I mean, there's, there's no, I mean, it, 
it's different machines. There's, you know, it's, everyone has their different requirements. They have a ton of <laughs> If you make them all astroturf, we can do it, probably. But look at the great it's job that DPW's been doing with the, um, you know, with the, uh, the field right up here. I, I remember way back when, I mean, you know, early 2000s, we tried hard to do this for like a long time. And we, and we it, it just, it just never seemed to work. Okay. okay. I'm not, I mean, again, I, I just, I would just say pragmatically, I don't, I don't think it's, there is It's a charter question. I mean, there's a lot of, well, there's a lot in play there. Mm -hmm. yeah, but, you know, but one of the other things is you know, that, that DPW has a place that they house all their equipment. And one of the things that I was thought was tough is that sometimes these tractors are just left out in, in the weather and not, uh, they, are, they, have, they have no place to live. And we all know that a, that a vehicle that uh, garage can, can last a lot longer. No, I, was, I was at the DPW. Well, was the storage facility they had in the budget. Yeah, well, I was at the, at the DPW facility the other day, and they were washing down all the trucks with a... Uh, uh, a solution that, that breaks down all the salt so that they don't rust out. And, uh, you know, they just put in that extra effort. And, and I think that that's something we really should look at. If we're going to spend another, if we spent 60000 two years ago, we're spending eighty this year, that we should really look at some place to, to put them and protect them. I think that's a great suggestion, particularly for seasonal equipment, right? I, I think if it's something we're using every day, then that's, mm -hmm. that makes it more difficult. But something like the tractor that's seasonal, um, I will follow up on having conversations about whether or not we could be <coughs> improve efficiencies in that manner. Thanks. Any other questions for the schools? Thank you all for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so in terms of things we need, can we get a, can we get a full blown copy of your budget just to look through? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Kamala, you have that from Mr. Dumas. One more question. Yep. Oh, the retention, the, uh, the renewal rate, the non-renewal rate on. Yep. I'll get that to you. Get those Do you want the presentation? I was trying to keep it positive and ask for sure. the renewal okay. rate. Not the non -renewal. I was trying to keep it positive. You can do one no, it is, it is a positive question. Yeah, I'll get it. To <laughs> Thanks you. again. Thanks so much. Okay. All right, DPW, you have two minutes. That's probably all he wants. <laughs> <laughs> Not John. He's got a camera. Good evening, gentlemen. I can hey. go two minutes, I can go 32 minutes, whatever you need. <laughs> Please. Seconds. What's your pleasure, Mr. Pleasure, Mr. I Chairman. think you can talk briefly to your budget, because I don't recall there being an enormous change in there. And then I think I'd like to talk more to your capital items. And I really want to talk pavement management, um, personally. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. So what's your department number again? John, I forgot. Uh, 420. 420. 420. 420, 420. Yeah, so you can go. You, if, I mean, it's, there's not a big, there's not a lot, a lot, a lot of movement here. Maybe well, you can talk briefly to that and just go right to your, the, you know, the pavement management and the other big things. Storm there are two, two highlights here, gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, the first is you'll see that there is a request for $370,000 in my stormwater system budget. And this is uh, to cover the increased costs associated with the new regulations that are promulgated in the EPA's new municipal separate storm sewer system, or MS4 permit. The EPA expects that, expects that permit to be released in March of this year, and it re represents an increase of some $220,000 more than prior years. And that estimate was calculated by an engineer hired by the 30 town consortium, of which we're a member. And gentlemen, what we're looking for moving forward is uh, the new permit's going to re require expanded illicit discharge detection and elimination. It's going to require detailed evaluations of what pollution may be entering our stormwater system. Uh, it's going to require increased street sweeping and catch basin cleaning. And we're also going to have to do uh, phosphorus and nitrogen removal of our stormwater if that's found in our stormwater system. So that's one of the, the changes from, from last year is to cover those costs so that will be in compliance with that permit. And is that going to be an annual thing, John, every year? Yes, it will be. So 370000 bucks a year going forward. Correct. Okay. And what, they, what the engineer did, Mr. Chairman, was they, they looked at our current, co current costs across the board, uh, everything from cleaning catch basins to disposing of our street sweepings to the, my time with the engineers and on and on. And what they found was that the differential from what we're currently doing and what the new permit will require is $270,000 per year. Got it. And okay. that will primarily be in the cost of hiring consultants coming in to do all of that new mapping, test all of our outfalls of our stormwater, um, so that there's a litany of, of things. So how much of that is like testing and monitoring as opposed to actually, you know, cleaning things and 
and actually I would say that that differential, the, the new $270,000, that is primarily monitoring, testing, wow. uh, and some additional sweeping and catch basin cleaning. Holy cow. Okay. It's an, it's an awful permit. And of the 30, 30 communities in that consortium, yeah. Hopkinton is affected the most uh, because we lie in several different stormwater systems. Yeah. Um, so that, that's one of the biggest changes in the, the highway budget. <coughs> the second, and if you'd like, we can get right into uh, the pavement management plan. Uh, with me this evening, I have William Scarpati, who you may recognize from FST. He's now with Stantec because FST was purchased by Stantec. But nonetheless, uh, in your packet, I did provide uh, a copy of their street conditions report. And, <clears throat> excuse me, what, what they put together was three different budget scenarios of spending $800,000 a year, a million dollars a year, which is what we've been doing for the past two years, and $1.2 million. And we put forward uh, the requested level funded budget, so our budget reflects a million dollars of expenditure. <clears throat> Excuse me. And with that, what we'll be doing is doing a balanced approach across all of our roads, whether they're arterial or collector streets, and that balanced approach will include crack sealing, mill and overlay, full depth reconstruction, and some rubber chip. So we're going to invest a million dollars back into our program. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of the things that I want to highlight about what we've put in the last two years is both those years we've been able to take our pavement condition index and increase it. So what the pavement condition index is an overall summation of what our roads are like. Uh, and we've kept that in the good range. But with that million dollars over the last two years, we've been able to increase that. So we're looking to do that again this year. Um, Mr. Chairman, I know that you had a question of how we're going to, how we're going to um, use those funds specifically as it relates to all the subdivision roadways. Um, and in your packet, there, there was also a map that shows all of the different roadways throughout right. town. Um, so you can look at those roads and you can see that across the board, whether they're subdivision streets or collector arterial streets, there are, they range the full gamut from the do nothing or the best condition mm -hmm. all the way through the base rehabilitation, which is a full depth reconstruction, tearing out what's there and putting in, in new. Um, so so our, our approach this year, if, if we're funded with a million dollars, is to apply those funds and we're looking at um, approximately four miles of work on arterial streets and three miles of work on those collector or subdivision type okay. streets. Good. Um, any questions for um, Mr. Westerling on his operating budget? Right between the screens. You're right between the screens. Mr. Hur, any questions? On no the, questions on the operating? this time. Any operating budget. None, none at all. Thank you. You're, you're hanging. Okay. Yeah, I do, I do have a question. Go ahead. So on the, on the um, pavement improvement plan, gas prices like petroleum's at an all-time low are we going to get like multiples of is now the time to really beef this up are we going to get more of our money than we would have two years ago yeah did we do this in 09 or 10 whatever it was when gas prices went to the floor last time we we did a ton of roads cheaply yeah it's an excellent question and what we do is we put out our general materials bid in this year we open them in january so those reflect the most current prices when you consider oil prices, mm -hmm. because uh, the oil is, is a major part of all of that bituminous concrete asphalt work. What we found was that there was a minor increase, even from last year. Uh, but last year, we benefited because when we bid those prices the previous fall, there are escalation and de-escalation clauses based on where the gas prices go, or the diesel price specifically. Mm -hmm. And we had a de-escalation in other words, we saved money because mm -hmm. those gas prices went down. So if the gas prices, if the diesel prices stay flat, then we'll be looking at a, a minor increase over the cost of last year um, of our bid prices. But if they, go, if they go up, of course, it's going to escalate. And if they go down, it's, we'll have a de-escalation clause. Thank so thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I guess we're good in the operating budget. John, you want to go to the capital articles and just give Absolutely. us an idea? You're looking for a couple trucks, the well, and then the big one, right, which is the, um, the water tanks and all. Yeah, and I'm happy to go through those individually if you wish. 
Uh, does anyone have any questions on any of these rather than just sort of go through them all? I mean, the trucks, I, you know, I, I'm going to trust them on the trucks at this point. Are we going to go with the, st at the uh, stainless backs and all these? Yes. All right. Any other questions? Are so they all an absolute must? The, uh, there are two, three, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the pickup truck has 161,000 miles on it. It's on, basically on its last legs. That one, we wouldn't have brought it forward if it were not an absolute Pardon? must. Uh, the other one is a 2002 international dump truck, and what we found on that one is that it's got severe, uh, severe corrosion of its main frame underneath. Uh, the main the beams that, that run and carry the weight of the, the vehicle, those are severely corroded, and it's becoming uh, unsafe when you're carrying a full load. It's one of our <coughs> bigger trucks, and it's got a full load of sand and salt on it, and it's got its plows on it. Uh, that, that is also a, a must in our mind. Are we going to buy a different manufacturer this time? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to put it into a brand new building, um, which, will, <laughs> which will be able to clean it at the end of the day. And as you heard Selectman Coutinho state, we're, we're using a new product, which we spray on, and it, it actually it, uh, it deactivates the salt so that we'll, we'll extend the life of them by using this new, Water. new chemical. We'll be able to wash them <laughs> every day after effect. they're out on the roads, and we'll be able to store them inside so they're not out exposed to the weather. Finally, it will have a, a stainless steel body on it. Uh, the, the dump part, right now, we have, uh, I think we only have one that has a stainless steel body. Um, what happens with the metal ones when it's got the sand and salt in it, it corrodes very quickly. The paint chips off and it rusts and it rots. The stainless steel ones, what we'll be able to do is to keep those dump bodies and put them on a new frame 10 years down the road. So these are basically indestructible for, for what we use them for. And the other, sorry, Go ahead. Okay. and the other projects are absolute musts in this fiscal year, this coming fiscal year? The other capital projects? Yes. Um, yes, we had, we had several others that we had um, that we could have brought forward, but we only brought forward those that we considered to be absolute musts. Um, and if, if, if you want, we can go through them individually, but the, the majority of them are related to water supply, and we've, we've looked at our water supply needs and what we can supply out of our own sources. Uh, just briefly, we've got a water biological filtration pilot study for wells four and five. If we're able to remove the iron and manganese to levels that are acceptable to DEP, that can free up some 820,000 gallons per day. Those are the ones at Whitehall, right? Are those That's the absolutely correct. Okay, so those are the ones where that are out of limits? Okay. Right. So those are, again, high iron and manganese. We don't use them on a daily basis because that stains people's clothing, it stains laundry. Uh, so we can only use those during severe drought uh, during, the, during the summers. So if, if we're able to, to remove the iron and manganese through this pilot program, um, this will show us what we'll have to build to, to remove that, but it'll free up 800,000 gallons a day. That's 800,000 gallons a day we won't have to purchase from other sources, namely Ashland. Um, water main replacement, we're doing a quarter million dollars on Hayden Row. We brought forward one for, for Cedar Street last year, and it's basically looking at the worst sections of water main that we have through town and replacing those. And the water main on Hayden Row uh, down towards uh, College Street, severely tuberculated. There's a buildup of material on the inside. We're running into water quality issues there. We still pass all the water quality requirements by DEP, but we want to replace that so that we can, we can stay with our, our high quality potable water. Um, water construction of the new Grove Street tank, that's approximately... Um, Didn't we already go for that? Didn't we? We went for the design. Yeah, okay. So right. we're designing that now, and if you remember that there are two tanks there, both of them need rehabilitation on the inside. The lining has failed, um, so what we're doing is replacing one of the tanks, uh, otherwise we'd have to rehab the inside, and that's some $600,000 worth of rehab. So we can build new for 1.2 or rehab for 600,000 on the inside. Yes, I uh, the final one is the uh, million dollars to partner with the town of Ashland as, uh, as they're looking to connect into the MWRA, and this will share the capital costs associated with that connection. The town of Hopkinton uh, will, what this will do is for the town of Hopkinton, it will ensure that we have a million gallons per day that we can purchase from them as we have in our intermunicipal agreement. Right now, when they run into water supply issues due to their aquifer lowering, they have to reduce what they supply to us. Uh, 
last October and into, into November, when the drought was the worst in Ashland, they could only supply us with 130,000 gallons per day. So it severely curtails, again, wells four and five, we can't pump out of them. Ashland can only supply us 130,000 gallons a day. We have a very difficult time meeting our needs. And that million dollars we're putting up, is Ashland putting up a million as well to keep the water flowing from their business side? Yes, they are. So they're back on with, are they signed with MWA, RA? Because right? we, went, we went down this road, then they sort of didn't do it. Is it a, is it a definitive thing now? Yes, uh, they went to a special town meeting to see the first step approval. Yeah. Uh, and we believe now the issues before the end of the year. Okay. Anybody else got any questions on the capital articles? John, sidewalks. We're coming into the last year of the sidewalk plan. Um, do we have a new one? What's the status of that? You know, where are we going to go? I'd like, you know, can we can we get some insights on the sidewalks? Or oh, Mr. Kamala, do you have something? Or I can give the board a quick update. We have staff working on updating the sidewalk master plan. We'll go through the process as we did before via the planning board. Presentation will be made to the board of selectmen. Okay. At the close of the annual town meeting warrant, I did submit a place for the article that okay. would allow this process to keep yeah. moving forward. Yeah, because I'd like, I mean, people like that, right? It's been huge value by the community, and, and I'd rather not have the risk of it stopping. So I'd, I'd love to get a new one geared up so we can just kind of keep on paving. Absolutely. We'd love to keep doing it. I th people really like that, and we got a lot of places we still need to go. So, okay. So we're going to we're gonna try to see if we can pull that one together. Yes. Okay. Terrific. Anything else for Mr. Westerling? Anybody? Anybody? Everybody good? John, thank you very much for your time. Just briefly, Mr. Chairman, the water and sewer, we didn't touch on that. Those operational budgets are remaining basically oh. the same, yeah, yeah, basically yeah. level funded. Um, we are working with our, our consultants looking at our uh, rate plan. We hope to have that to you um, in May. Your, probably your second meeting in May because your first meeting is right before town meeting. All right. That's after town meeting that we set those rates, correct? Yeah. Yeah, water's down and sewer's basically flat. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Police and fires next. Chief radio or chief? Steve's. Huh? Chief only has two cruisers. Chief only has two cruisers. Got to stop crashing them. Yeah, Steve has. Steve has a more substantive presentation for the board. Got to be quick, Steve. Okay, uh, for FY17, we uh, pretty much stayed uh, or aimed for the goal of staying uh, level funded, only going uh, $76,000 uh, uh, $76, increase, and uh, basically that was due to uh, union obligation contracts and uh, funding for. Uh, uh, six months of, of two positions. So with that being said, I think we're, we're in pretty good shape there. Um, besides those increases, basically uh, we stayed we stayed level funding. Um, as far as capital requests, is the standard uh, two cruises that we were looking for that are uh, on the schedule uh, for our fleet. Um, basic uh, replacements of front front line cruises. Um, that are over the uh, 80,000 mile mark, which we use to uh, reduce costs, save on insurance, and help on uh, trades. Mr. Chair, okay. So uh, we had a crash or two in the last year or so, is that correct? That's correct. And how, where are those vehicles now? Uh, uh, one of them, uh, was totaled, the others were repaired, and the other, the one that was uh, totaled was replaced. And the one that was totaled was replaced, and our insurance, I assume, picked up that tab? That is correct. Are we self-insured up to a certain amount on vehicles? Or is that a typical auto policy type thing? So we have a, we don't we're not self-insuring up to ten grand or something like that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Welcome. Uh, that, I, I, this is only a, a guesstimate, but I believe it was uh, in the 20s, 20,000. Sure. So out of that, um, so so level funded, other than uh, contractual obligations, two cruisers, and I, I don't remember everything you talked about the last time you came in here. We, there was a lot of initiatives, a lot of new things you were talking about, including the accreditation. There's there's no costs around any of that. Um, is there overtime associated with accreditation or? Uh, we tried. It sounded like you had a lot of stuff going on. We I'm, certainly I'm do. But, uh, that, that there's not a bigger, bigger draw on the budget, or or is you know what what makes up that two, two point seven odd percent. No, we certainly do, and we have a uh, you know a lot of hard working men and women in the, on the department, and a lot of their their work is uh, being done while while on duty to try to drive down the costs of uh, overtime. A lot of volunteerism on the, on the police department in certain areas as well. And uh, through the chair, how's the how's the joint dispatch working? Is that so? So the fire department is no longer supporting that from a budgetary standpoint, correct? correct? And does this fall under the police department's budget, or is this budget is a separate entity? Because it's how, how's that working exactly? Okay. It's, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a separate budget, and uh, uh, if I could briefly comment on that, we're, uh, we're able to uh, not only level fund, but uh, reduce the cost of this year as compared to, to last year by 70000 Basically, that was uh, done because uh, the first year in the initiative, putting everything in place, there was a lot of training where there was extra pay involved in that over time. Uh, dispatches that are training officers get extra pay while they're taking on... Uh, New employees, so there was a, a lot of uh, costs but the that will not that will not be in, in, in FY17. But the net savings is seventy thousand for this year. So where is that in here as a line item? It's uh, two two fourteen. Two fourteen. Two fourteen. Okay. All right, it's three. All right, thank you. It's it's the right number. Got it. Please dispense. Central Central dispense. Dispense. You Good? Yep, I'm good. Thank Mr. you. I had a bite at the apple, but I'd like another if I could, please. I'm, I'm not clear about this six-month funding for two positions. I mean, we're going to have to fund these positions going forward. So you're saying that your, your increase this year of 70 grand uh, was six months starting January 1 through, no. What six months are we talking about? Well, here? we only received funding in uh, uh, FY16, January of FY16 this year. It'll be a full year of a lieutenant's pay and a full year of an officer's pay, not 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 six months. So you had six months in last year's budget. Now you're adding six months. Thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm good. Sorry. Got it. No, that was so good, Ms. Catino. I'm all, all right this time. Mr. Sestari. Also. Okay, okay Chief. That's that on the operating budget. Any you get? You just want two crew, standard two cruisers, same as yes. always. Yes. I mean. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, last year we were had we had some uh, money for uh, security upgrades and that kind of stuff. Uh, is, did that, that that went through town meeting? I believe with a couple hundred thousand. And that went that went through the uh, well the, the door schools. locks and stuff. That it was the schools. He the centralized stuff we didn't go for. We didn't, that, that didn't happen. So we. Uh, we but we might be able to uh, get uh, funding outside of the, the police department through uh, IT. You good? Okay. Chief uh, Capital Items. Just the cruisers, right? Yeah. Kind of. We, we went over that. Uh, uh, sorry about that, Mr. Same Chair. Hours. But uh, basically, uh, two uh, frontline cruises. Yeah. Um, uh, the cost of those; those are the regular. Uh, on the Just regular like the ones you got, the little SUV things we're driving now. Absolutely, and okay. it also includes the uh, the computer systems, the uh, the cages, and all the lights and sirens. Cruise the gun so expensive. Okay, good. Thank you. Anybody else? Anything else for the chief? Okay, thank you, chief. Thank you, chief. Chief. 
Oh, yeah, Mr. So Chair, sorry. one quick comment while we're changing places here. Yes, sir. I think the chiefs, both chiefs, have done an excellent job communicating uh, in recent months about ac activities and things going on in town, and I appreciate it very much. It's nice to see it from our team first before I see it anywhere else or hear about it anywhere else. Amen. So thank you. All right, Chief. 220. 220. That's it. Yes, sir. Go ahead. So for uh, FY17, we're presenting a level service budget. We're building off of the um, successes of the public safety dispatch. The uh, hiring of two day positions is in the process, and that was out of 16's town meeting. Um, we have a training initiative and employee development that's ongoing from 16. And I'm continuing my evaluation of the success of that through just effective response uh, of uh, watching our data and how we're responding to emergencies. Mm -hmm. What makes up the hundred and four thousand thousand personal services? Is it more people, more money for? Bulk of it is the uh, second half of what you would have for the two full-time positions. There are a few, uh, about five step increases that are in there, okay. and um, that's the majority of it. So it's two full-time people and a, and a few bump ups. The second half of the two full-time. Second half of two bump ups. Okay. Um, okay. Anybody got any questions for the chief on his operating budget, Mr. Catino? No, I just want to say thank you for helping put out the fire at uh, Golden Pond this morning. Just Your timing was good. Wow, how propitious. Yeah, exactly. Mr. Sistar, any fires you put out for you lately? Okay, good. Mr. Her. Mr. Mosier. No fires in my place. Uh, but just so around the, around the personnel, so, so I understand that. So that is the two positions from the personnel fund from last year's budget. Is that, is that where that's coming from? It's similar to the police. The <coughs> two yeah. impact positions in the fire months. department in 16 were funded for six months. Right, okay. The ACA were funding those positions for 12 months. All right. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, there's the 2% uh, contractual increases. Okay, thanks for refreshing my memory on that. And um, I don't see any big capital expenditures for this year around trucks or anything sorry. like that. I'm sorry, we don't. I don't see any big Truck, capital ex expenditures around trucks or anything this year. But you, you we know, do have we, some capital stuff to report you, to you. Okay. Yep. Right. All I see is this uh, fire apparatus. Is that the oxygen thing? I have. Uh, yeah, car four. I'm going to report to you, and I have one initiative I'd like to talk about. Okay, yeah, you ready to go on? The yeah, I think we'll go with the so operating can budget. We, one other quick comment before we go, go forward. We're we are having a lot of our all of our department heads come in this evening. Everyone's coming in tonight at some point, right? So we're all coming in, and we've got a few departments, uh, particularly public safety, where we have additional personnel. We have additional personnel because the town is growing. And the town, through that growth, is generating additional revenue with this additional real estate coming online. So as people sit at home and watch and think about what's going on in town hall and with our public safety, we're staffing to maintain a reasonable level of public safety. We are adding personnel, but we have real estate growth coming in to pay for that additional real estate personnel. So we're, you're not seeing you know, a 5% spike in your taxes in 2017, fiscal year 2017, because of these ads. These ads are because of the growth in the community, and the ads are coming in arrears behind the growth of the real estate revenues. I just want to make that point. I guess it's stating the obvious, but you know, some people may tune in halfway through and say, they just added two, and they just added two. Where's all the money coming from? Thank you. Okay. Just on a, a measure of, I, I talked to you about effective response force in a really neat piece. You know, our biggest growth was with the public safety dispatch project going through and freeing up a firefighter. And the, the, the measures I had for November and December, which were the first two months um, improvement of effective response force went from we're roughly around 54 percent to we're approaching 80 percent effective response for calls so that's a big bang for that initiative I just kind of as an update right. of the initiative it's one of the biggest improvements I've seen okay thank you thanks Chief. Oh, a lot of truck oh man you know I almost asked and then I didn't pardon hmm? Uh, Chief, uh, you blew it. I have a firm no pictures rule. Exception is we are. <laughs> so I just so I'll, I'll try to just quickly run you through this. I just wanted to give you some perspective on this. I started off um, just the assessment for capital. I did a look through of the uh, stock that we have um, 
number one's kind of obvious to you. We don't have a ladder truck in our fleet. Number two is uh, engine one is a uh, vehicle that we have some money from capital to refurbish, but it's, it's um, way past the ability to refurbish, and I'll touch on that in a second. Number three, we're trying to actually see whether we could work engine one into the rescue and we're struggling with that design. And then number four is this uh, old ambulance we've used for technical rescue and communication. So I'll just touch on those quickly as we go through. Page two is a picture of a ladder truck. That's currently what we do is we share with Ashland's ladder. It's worked well for us for probably the past 10 years. The challenges are distance travel, time, and logistics. And uh, I just report to you that I just truly feel we're overstaying our welcome with that sharing. So that's why I brought it forward. It's just been a challenge for us. The second piece is engine one. I Just a picture for you. We were um, contemplating in 2011 refurbishing it. It's past refurbish when we checked. So we have some money that was set aside to refurbish, but we just stopped the project. It wasn't going to be worthwhile. Rescue 10. On page uh, three, there's just a picture of the back of that. It's an old ambulance that we just put equipment in. And what I want to do is just take that out of the fleet, and I can take that function and put it into the new rescue, which we already have in the coming forward. Page four, you just see the options. Add a ladder, remove the engine, redesign the rescue, remove this rescue 10. How am I doing? Are everybody with me okay right now? So number five, just the solution. I'm proposing we adjust some of the funds and we look at a used ladder truck. It would be for five or six years that we could deal with the issue that we have on some of the new construction, um, work with it, train with it, get ready for uh, serving the community as, as it continues its growth. Obviously, some of the construction that's going on down at Legacy Farms and Muse are some buildings, and there's a potential for this hotel district that's coming up with the uh, talk of um, the town uh, meeting this year. I just gave you a couple examples of used ladder trucks. They can run anywhere from 60000 to $150,000. We've checked on the market. We think this is a reasonable possibility, so I wanted to share that idea with you. A ladder is only a $125,000? It, it would be a used. No, I get that. Yep. I'm just, I'm just, it just seems. Yeah, that's the range we're running into right now. So I can How go. old is it? How old it's is the ladder? It's about a 23-year-old ladder truck was about what you would see. The ladder truck engines well, don't. Well, the policemen we're hiring nowadays. Engines don't really have a chance at this, but there's some communities, these small communities that might be somewhere that just, they get new ladder trucks after 23 years. The example I gave you is a real example that says like Sharon Fire. They're just about to get rid of one. It'll be a year from now, but it's, it's, it's a real, it could fill that gap without me walking in right now and saying I need $1.1 million for a ladder truck. So it, it just kind of gives you a chance to put that into capital and evaluate the use. Can we, are we going to take these one at a time or? Well, let's let them go through. He's got to just, let them yeah, go through I'll the just, whole plan. I'll I mean, try to get through I, it quick. The plan and is seven, 725 gets moved around into some better plan. But let's, let's So the it. rescue, we have money. If you go to um, yep. page five, we have $680,000 for a rescue, which we were trying to turn into a pumper also, this engine one. Mm -hmm. what, what I'm suggesting is I met with the whole department. We've done a lot of work on this concept of reorganizing. We're going to turn it into just a rescue. We would move some of the equipment into the ladder truck and the ladder truck eventually would become a quint model, which we talked about in the Ashland uh, concept there, that um, it, it basically it's a ladder truck with a pump, and it, and it would fit much better that way than trying to turn this rescue truck into a pump, which we've tried to engineer for about the last nine months, and we're really struggling. So I just share that with you. Okay. So, and the final solution is to add, I just gave you kind of a concept picture of a ladder truck that has a pump. It could, um, they're making, the engineering makes them smaller, a little bit, better for turning. They could actually be a pump first in. They could make a driveway, give us some of the thing we need for these bigger buildings and some of the reaches we need just to serve our, our houses in our community. So financial adjustments as we get towards the end. Mm -hmm. I'm saying I could do this whole project within the money that's been appropriate for the rescue and the refurbish of engine one. So if you, the, the bottom part would be we readjust the price for the rescue down to $500,000. I've actually had a manufacturer in. We went through it. We can make that price. The, we would, I put a number of $125,000 for a ladder truck. That would be a struggle to get a used one with a pump, but we don't necessarily need that for this five, six-year pilot that we're doing until we get a new ladder truck. The $100,000, we would do some work on the engines to make them so that they could do extrications out in the highway until the heavy rescue got there to back them up. And then the new ladder truck would go into the capital plan. 
just the impact on the capital plan. I did some quick math for you. Mm -hmm. um, pulling the engine out, pulling Rescue 10 out of the capital plan and adding a ladder, would we'd basically be looking at a $320,000 impact. There actually is money in the capital plan for a ladder, but it just hasn't been looked at as real money. So yeah. for this to be a real plan, that would be the impact. So I threw a lot at you quickly. I know I like you have it. a lot of questions, so. Right, just chief, just I, I just just so I can understand what's going on. You had six hundred eighty for rest to replace rescue one. Now it becomes five hundred to replace rescue one. And what you're giving up then is you're not having to be a pumper as well. It would basically move some equipment to a ladder, so that allows it to downsize, and it removes the pump and a water tank, which allows it to downsize. So those two functions allow you to get it down to about a five hundred thousand dollars. So you no longer have any pumps because that's not a pump. The ladder is not a pump. Are you in trouble without the a pump? The new ladder, so we would be left with if the new, the used ladder that I proposed, mm -hmm. if it didn't have a pump on it, which that would be a challenge. Which you won't. It would drop us to three. We would still meet our ISO rating because of the way we did the tanker. That has a large pump on it. Right. It would be a little challenge on ISO with the water tank capacity, like within a couple hundred gallons. But the, the, the concept for the ladder coming in would be fine. To replace that, this new new ladder, okay. and you you as the chief would be comfortable with 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 that limitation, with that rate limiter. Yes. Okay. So in your judgment, that wouldn't impair public safety, not having no. this extra pump. No. The, okay. the, the whole caveat here is long term. I wouldn't be comfortable saying we could run a model with four, less than four pumps, and that's where this ladder in the capital that definitely yeah. has a pump in five years. Yep. Short term, there's a potential I could land a used ladder with a pump. I just don't want to say that to you tonight. Yeah. And it's really, that's not the main issue right in front of us right now. Just not having an aerial is, is an issue. Just some of the logistics and equipment. Is there, is there a reasonable price at which we could get a ladder with a pump? If we went to a buck fifty, do, can we get a pump? The, you know, the, our... the second picture that I showed you, that one literally is $130,000. That's in a lot right this second. With um, a pump? It, you would, with a pump. You, it's, it's a 20 four 25 year old vehicle again um like any used vehicle of that when we bring it in here there's yeah, a little bit of risk of you're taking a gamble but again worst case scenario it struggles and we're back to today's model you know so i i don't think there's a huge i don't think there's any risk to the public we're going to train on it practice on it have a piece of equipment to start getting if you got the one off of the lot it's certified it's got some type of a warranty but it's five thousand bucks more than you're asking for it is, and that's not the one I'm really looking at because okay. trying to get a used one with a pump, there's a big demand for that. Other communities are looking for that. It drives the price up, and I don't know that that's our long-term solution. So, but is it driving to 150 or something or some? You know, I mean, I guess I'm trying to say is let's not be penny wise and pound foolish. I, I, so okay, I'm with you. I, I admire your fitting this into the numbers you have. Yep. But if we're talking 25 or 50 grand and you enhance public safety, you know, disproportionately with that, and or you get a truck that's maybe a little bit newer, you know, I, my, my feeling is, my vibe is that's money well spent. So that's all I'm trying to say. I'm so we should you. think about I think that. that. You know, I, we spent a lot of time kicking that one around, what I would present to you guys yeah. internally. Okay. And um, I think just today's staffing, we would need a little more staffing to be able to do this pump capacity also to okay, move fine. it out first there you out. Go. Okay. The newer technology is the one that's going to make it run that way to make the pump work right. Yeah. This 25-year-old truck's a little bit bigger, doesn't turn quite as good. It's, it's, a, it's the latter part that we're looking for. Got it. Okay. So um, I don't, there's no jeopardy or public safety with the current equipment we have is really nice, okay. and, and it's enough. Mrs. Sestari, questions? Um, I guess what's uh, generally at what point do you need a ladder truck in your arsenal in terms of height of buildings and uh, or, or just general configuration of buildings? We're I, I I can't even come up with the fire department that doesn't have a ladder truck off the top of my head right now. So <laughs> that's you. your question. You really need one. It's not so much what? about the height of the building. Oh, okay. it's, it's just for time, how quickly it gets here. Um, and the reach for is more of an issue. We, we might pull into okay. some of our, our larger houses. The engine might be in already, which is a normal design. And the, you need a little bit of reach to get the ladder in there. Okay, I got it. Ashland's ladder is really nice, but it's a tower and it's a bigger type of a thing. That's what Southboro has. And they're really, 
they're great if we deal with a church or one of, or a hotel or something like that. But mm-hmm. you know, that's not my main issue. Uh, having a ladder that could also work on the community's buildings and infrastructure would be good. Right. Okay. Um, Chief, I've, I like the way that you've kind of moved the cards around here and tried to figure out how we can do more with uh, not with less, but with the same amount. Um, so thanks for thanks for going through that. Um, you know, I mean, I look at this and. Granted, I know that there's risk associated with with a plan like buying a 23 year old ladder truck. Sure. Um, but at the same time, I look at this and maybe it's the the uh, Yankee in me, which there's not a lot of Yankee in me. But um, you know, and I say, well, why wouldn't we just buy one of these ladder trucks, a used ladder truck, every five or six years? Sure. And if you're looking at a 20 year lifespan before people are getting rid of it, towns are getting rid of them, then we're making out. <laughs> you know, comparing sure. to you know one point one, one point two million dollars. Understood. Um, is is it basically the the risk that's associated with that used vehicle? Is that why? I think the way I justified it is we're going from zero to to having the used ladder truck. Mm-hmm. In 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 the model that you're saying, um, as a town, we've committed to quality equipment for a long time. Yep. So for going from zero to there. In this budget, with me being here two months and just this quick evaluation, mm-hmm. I'm okay with it. I actually really believe in it. I know it's a lot of change, but I believe in the model. I, I, I truly do. In my yeah, organization, well, we we spent a week going through the entire organization, and they get it. They they honestly, um, I've never seen such buy-in like this, and that's to not get a brand new vehicle right now. So that's I'm, I'm impressed well, and, with that. and and I especially like this model because if your if your sights are set on buying that new model. Uh, I'm sure they come in all different flavors and configurations and things they like do. that. Learning, learning what you'd like to have when you're spending the full nut, uh, you know, and what you can do without and things like that. That's that's a pretty important step. So we talked a lot about that internally. So and they, that's where the buying came from. They they get that. Great. All right. Thanks, Ms. Catino. We're not going to end up with a blue one, though, are we? No blue one. Okay. <laughs> Most important question right. answered. Yeah. Now, this is great. I, I, um, when I spoke about this before when I was in your office, and, and this is you know, the way that you moved around this money is just great. Uh, it, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, to answer Mr. Satari's question, that it's something that we absolutely need. And to, to squeeze it in like this, it's a great job. Thank you very much. Mr. Mosher. Uh, how often would this truck be deployed like do we keep statistics on how often we need to call on Ashland for the use of their truck I don't have the answer to that that's a good question we do it on every first alarm and that's about 4% of our calls so 2,000 calls 4% that's about the standard run of it um, we've been really busy lately we ran Ashland today um, again they're a great piece of equipment their logistics it's stored on the other side of Ashland they literally have to go to their other station to pick up some people and then they come by the time it was deployed at this incident, we were starting to pick up. And their, their intent is great. It's just logistically a, a big challenge for us. So um, you know, that's all I should say about that. OK, I got it. Uh, but, but it sounds like, I mean, this, this would be a good fit for a used vehicle where it's not, it's not going out on every call. It would not go out on every call. OK, thank you. Mr. Hart. So um, I had the. Good fortune, or actually, I had the misfortune of seeing the ladder truck from Ashland or Milford, I think it was, uh, uh, firsthand a couple years ago. And um, when it arrived, everything on the scene changed, I could tell. I I know nothing about fire science. But when it arrived, everything started happening at a much faster rate, and the fire went down quicker, and they got inside the building faster, and it was safer for the guys on on the ground, I thought. Uh, from what I can see, et cetera, et cetera. So I think what you've presented here this evening is fantastic. I think it's an excellent step in the right direction. I don't know if it goes far enough, but I get why we can't maybe go you know, run the marathon before we run the 5K here. Um, I think we definitely need to consider this and move this forward. Uh, but And I think some of us saw what the ladder truck was doing at my house that night. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a definite adder to the scene's uh, security. So I'm good. Okay. Um, right. So I think the board would be supportive of this. My only concern is actually um, uh, sort of legal. The warrant yeah. specifies, <laughs> specifies the actual vehicles. So we're going to have to go through and, I guess, 
kind of reappropriate this money. Like, this isn't so simple. I guess we're going to have to go through and re we'd have to put this in the warrant, reappropriate this money, right? Yes, we, and then we, we have a place all the article that will request repurposing of the okay. uh, two prior town meeting articles. Okay. So I think you should plan on being ready to come up and talk to this. I mean, it, it makes a ton of sense to us. Understood. Um, again, my only caveat would be, you know, again, if, if for small money you can make some dramatic difference, We're looking let's have the that. conversation. I, I'm and, pushing the same thing. And I usually say spend more, but yeah, this is good. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Your car four is the one that is on Capitol. Are you okay with that? It's a, a nine, 2002. It's a fire inspector car. It's beat to heck. It can't go anywhere else. It's done. Okay. We're good. Thanks, Thank Chief. you. Thanks, Chief. Thanks. Okay. Next, Parks and Rec. We have a handout. We had a handout. Um, so, Mr. Kamala, please. Again, to, to set the context, um, we had a handout. Where did my handout go? We, the finance director and myself, have had very good conversations with the Park and Rec Commission as well as the director. I think what I what I take from from those conversations are the following points. Um, one, we yeah, now thank you. But I, I had one. I just got to find it. Oh, yes. thank you. Yeah, Go ahead. We, we now have in place a team uh, in the Park and Rec Department. <coughs> Uh, that is willing. Uh, that is working diligently with the commissioners uh, in developing the appropriate tools uh, for providing the highest quality um, park and rec services to the community. Uh, secondly, uh, at a macro level, I think we now have the framework uh, for better understanding the park and rec uh, enterprise budget uh, in terms of the revenues and the uh, receipts. Oh, sorry, and, and expenses. Uh, as well as I think through this conversation we have identified clearly um, the, the commitments that go beyond simply uh, the, the, the commission uh, and have a community-wide impact. And then finally, uh, in, in, in terms of the, of, the, of the commitments that Park and Rec has made, be it in terms of the relationships with private entities or the commitments relative to capital projects, I think we now have in place an accounting procedure that uh, would allow Park and Rec to uh, continue these long-term discussions uh, with all entities that have an interest uh, in that subject matter. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Kamalo. Hey, Jerry. Hey. You want to um, just walk, you know, walk through and sure. then we can ask um, questions? So I think the main thrust of this should be really the programming piece, mm -hmm. which if you look on the second page, there's more of a, uh, a revenue versus expense schedule. And if you look at the top half of that, um, you can see pretty much our main programs. And what I wanted to point out is really the vast majority of what we do here is really five or six main programs, which is the summer camps or the playground groups, the sports clinics, the in-town basketball program, the ski program, um, driver's ed um, and I have Fruit Street in there as well and then if you see where I have other programs that's really made up of about 40 to 50 smaller things that are more driven towards very select demographics in town art programs arts and crafts um, you know volleyball and if you look at that you'll see that the programs we run are actually very profitable with the exception of um, some of the smaller ones and then if you look underneath that where it says non-programming those are the things we spend money on that are really non-revenue generating Sandy Beach um, the indirect costs uh, the town common um, we have a, a budget transfer that goes to DPW to service the uh, to mow the grass at the common and the beach and EMC and pick up trash so when you get down to the bottom there of the general fund subsidy, the majority of that is really spent on things that are revenue neutral, I guess you'd say. Okay. Can you just, what's the indirect cost? What, what is that? Indirect costs, um, I think that's, in layman's terms, basically our, what our share is of things like the infrastructure in town, this building. Oh, is this, is this insurance oh, and benefits and stuff yeah. like that? Yes. 
our time, finance director's time. Oh, okay, fine. fine. It's, an, it's an overhead allocation. Fine, fine, fine. Okay. Yeah. And is there, is somewhere in here, is there an accounting provision for, like, um, this has been, I think, a question for a lot of the board members, so I'll just start with it. Like the, the, um, the fields, like Fruit Street, you know, we've talked about Fruit Street, 10 year replacement cycle. Is there s somewhere in here, is there a, there an there, accounting for for the there, a revolver for that? There is not an accounting in there for that. I, I do have something like that. The, the only level of the accounting we, in, in meeting today, we, yeah. we, we still have some. Um, I, I guess we need to create a, a, a more effective balance sheet for where we are today right. on that. Right. But from an income and loss standpoint, there is a line item on what you have there, suggesting sixty-five thousand dollars in revenue and a. Uh, and $29,000 in expenses. That's what we're looking at for this year, and it's what we have budgeted for next year. So is R&M Fruit Street, is that the, whatever, savings account for the, is that what you're telling me? That's, no, that's, that's repair and maintenance. That's, that's the expense. That's repair and maintenance, oh, okay. Yeah. That's, but that doesn't include this. So, so here's, the, here's the board's concern, right? It's that, it's that, it's that multi-million dollar, or whatever, it's million sure. dollar replacement. We got, we got sort of five years from now, four years from now, whatever it is. And so, is there is there a is there a savings is there a a cookie jar for that? Um, th there is. Okay. Um, we, based on information I had, we got today. I, I don't I don't think we're ready to to give a number for what the balance is in that right now. Okay. Um, I'll I'll say that now that we have Jay on board and he's been on board for a year, mm -hmm. I think we've got a, a, a commitment to do a, a P and L to. First of all, find out what's in the cookie jar. Right. Second of all, uh, come up with a, a P and L that we look at quarterly to, to, to see that we're going in the right direction. Right. Um, as as much as we possibly can. And uh, thirdly, it's one of Jay's goals to make sure we are maximizing rev revenue there. Yeah. The challenge is really the mix between out of town organizations that pay a lot of money. Right. And in town organizations that, that that really need to use it, yeah. and and then it's a it's a function of twisting the dials on yeah. on how we right. charge the in town groups. Yeah. Right. So things. I, so the thing I like about this is this is the first time I've ever actually seen the explicit accounting of the subsidy. So it's great. I mean, it's it's it's. So thank you. It's, but then the second thing is I'm you know I I think as a board we've been concerned about again this kind of fruit street kind of bull, you know big bullet that's coming and then this also ties into the new building you're going to build which is supposedly also going to have kind of a cookie jar to pay for it. So that's the next step we're going to get to is having having that actually ensuring that we're not. And it's going to end up having the town pay for all that when it was kind of sold to everybody as we wouldn't. So, I, yeah, let me go. Let me go to the board for questions. So, uh, do you want to just? No, I, I I just want to say that that I agree, and we're we're thrilled to finally be seeing these numbers yeah. as, as a commission. So, so it's fabulous. Unfortunately, yeah. we haven't had the numbers through the years yeah, I got uh, to, to do some of the things you're talking about. <coughs> um, and I'd also like to suggest that for for what we're trying to do budget wise, um, I, I think. It, it's an important discussion to talk about Fruit Street field replacement, but I think it's a it's a small part of what we're talking about budget wise here tonight. That's for, yeah. Well, so, so, I mean, from, I, I from an operational perspective, yes, yes, operation. I agree. Yeah. Mr. Herb, you had a question. So we we have the Parks and Rec that's duly elected by the citizens of Hopkinton, and we have the director that reports to the Parks and Rec board, correct? Um, but has the director? And I know Jay's new, but. In previous years, has the director had the access to the town's financial services team to help them coordinate and sort of track these things and set up accounts and set up a, a budget process for the renewal of the fields, et cetera, et cetera? Or are they kind of on their own since they're duly elected? I, mean, I don't want them on. I don't hope. To, I hope they're not on their own. But well, again, budgeting we own. I mean, they're elected, but we own the budget. So right, but they have to prepare it and they've got to run it they year round. So on, they yeah, need right. the staffs. Support, yes. I think, throughout the year, Agreed. so that Jay's not bur buried, sort of tracking numbers when Chris and his team can track the numbers for him. To, in to, fact, to that end, Brian, I, ha I can only speak for myself, not my predecessors. I've had tremendous support from from Norman and Chris on that end. As information as I need it, the resources are there for me to get it now. I think with Munis being in place now for a year or so, with a new finance director, um, the relationship is really strong because I'm in the building. So whenever I need something, it's, it's pretty readily available. So, so when we get to the point where I think we're all going to be comfortable, we won't have a, quote, cookie jar. We'll have account number XYZ PDQ that says there's this much money in there. 
And I don't think we have that yet, and that's what I'm talking about. Is I, we do need to formalize. I do believe there's an account that's established that has money in it. Well, we, we have established through conversations with the Park and Rec Commissioners as well as the Director a template for tracking these accounts. As we all know, the town has invested over the past years uh, in programs that will help us improve our accounting procedures. Accounting for these programs is part of that process. So when will we get away from the cookie jar to an account number with the solid piece of, with an accurate number in it? We have the accounting framework that identifies the different accounts. So we are in the, I think we've taken the right steps to move away from the cookie jar. When was the key part of the question? <coughs> As of now, we're doing that. We but we don't have that tonight. Well, we, Brian, we I think so. I think what we don't I'm not have, trying to pick on anyone here. I'm just trying to point out that we don't have a hard number. What we don't have is the, the balance account. in the account. Exactly. What there we is do an have account. is a framework to account on what's going forward. And, and, and part, of the, part of determining that is, is figuring out what's enterprise fund and what's, what should be shifted from enterprise fund balances that have been accrued through the years into that account. So, so there's, a, there's a little bit of work that needs to be done on that. Okay, and, and Jay, you feel comfortable that our team, our team, we're all on the same team, our team is working together to get that information organized. I do. Um, and also, the other half of this equation is um, Hop Continued Soccer, because there's a user agreement in place with them as well. So they have to be part of that. And they're obligated as part of the agreement when we yeah. first did the deal that they'd have money set aside as well. So. But we shouldn't have to have conversations about when, and we shouldn't have to conversations, have conversations about what. It should be how much is in the number, period. And we can't have that tonight. So that, in my view, while we have a framework, we're not there yet. Do you agree or disagree? We are moving in that direction. <laughs> We are moving in that direction. Like watching okay, the so, that means, so that means you agree with me that we're not there yet, right? I mean, are we 80% there? I think we are 85%. <laughs> well, right. Yeah, and I think, I think you need to appreciate the fact that when numbers just start flying around that aren't certified yet, that's when we all start getting in trouble uh, because eventually if that number is not right, then you know all hell breaks loose and everybody's pointing fingers at everybody else and right now Mr. Kamalo and Jay and and Dan and the rest of the board you know they're working on things you know I think that the the general sense and consensus is that if you look back a year ago two years ago you know we we definitely have more visibility into what's there and everybody's feeling good about it but now it's a matter of really kind of accounting for it down to the penny so that, so that it can be made more public. Actually, that's not the issue. There is an enterprise fund, as I understand it, that has money in it. The issue is I don't think there's been a, there hasn't been a cookie jar exa explicitly set up. To, no one actually knows what the cost should be for the fields, right? And so no one's actually, right? Am I, am I, am I saying this wrong? There's no and I think there's been nothing, there's nothing allocated. What? You, yeah. could, you could go out and get seven bits today, but they're going to expire right. in 60 days. Right. And when we replace the field six years from now, I don't know if it's tied to the cost of gasoline or, or, or right. what it is. So get, today's cost would be completely different. And I'd also suggest that we might not even want, without getting into, into it too much, we might not even want to replace yeah. the field with the materials that are used today. I think the days of right. crumb rubber are coming to an end. No, I don't deny oh, Thank God, because my house is full of it in the spring. But I mean, but I... I could change the whole... <laughs> But I mean, but I, right, but I think the problem is still is that uh, on a very fundamental basis, when this was sold to the town, it was sold as this will be in and of itself innately self-perpetuating, right? We will not come back to your town and, at, and hit you up for whatever it is in 10 years. I remember, I remember very clearly it was a 10-year life. And I remember very clearly, I think it was about a million bucks. So I think it was about $100,000 a year you were, supposed to be, you were supposed to be stashing away. I think that money's been collected. It just hasn't been, there's been, never been an, an actual account set up, and I don't think there's a balance in any sort of account that we can so point I guess, to. I guess what I was hearing, is, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that, A, <clears throat> nobody really knows if it's a million dollars in six years or ten years from now. Correct. Because the lifespan varies. And, B, we're not, we're not quite sure you know, what would be in that cookie jar if the cookie jar was... But the fear is that the money sits in the enterprise fund unallocated, and then it doesn't get, it gets, you know, put to other purposes, and we sort of, and, we, and at the end of the day, this sort of moral obligation isn't fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Well, 
And it's even more complicated than that because the soccer is on the hook too for part of it. So, so and I, I, I don't given given the scope of this meeting tonight, I don't, yeah. I, I don't think. No, we're, we're going wide beyond down the, yeah, yeah. the fruit street path. But yeah, the, the, you're right. The, the soccer um, partnership kind of adds another level of complexity. Right. Uh, and we've just recently gotten a lot more information from that. So we've, uh, we, we've, as a commission, have got our arms around that a lot better. Right. Happy to sit down with it, 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 in another meeting and, and, and talk about strategies and, and get ideas on, on funding, because um, yeah. yeah, there probably isn't a huge, uh, there probably isn't a huge sum of money for replacement in the next couple of years. But we do have, um, you know, we are able to generate a, right. a profit on the fields at a greater rate than we were a couple of years ago because we're managing it better. We have See, in my opinion, we have to be amortizing for this in some way. Yes, and we, we have the bandwidth now to expand the scope of business down there, which is what I'm more excited about, actually. So I think we're missing out on a lot of opportunities to really get more money out of the right. place. The other reason we have to I'll come to just one second. I just want, the other reason we have to figure this out is because when it comes time to bond the new building, I really strongly feel like the board has to has to make sure we this process is established. So when this new building goes in, the 500, we actually are have it coming out directly, Mr. Catino. Yeah, and I, I think we're going to to your point. I think we're going to do a much better job with the with the new building because you know, four or five years ago, whatever it was, when we built these fields, we didn't have the infrastructure. Uh, we didn't have the, the hooks in place to, to be able to track it. We, we had, uh, you know, part-time people running, running the, the, the whole group. And, um, you know, now we've got full-time people. We've got numbers. We've got units. And, and so now we'll be able to come up with those numbers. But, uh, you know, we, we were making promises that, uh, that we couldn't keep at the, at the time back then. Uh. <laughs> uh, you know, that's <laughs> I, I think promises are promises, I think, yeah. Okay. Well, we didn't give them everything they needed. Anybody else got anything for the Parks and Rec? Anything else you want to yeah. tell us? Yeah, yeah. No, uh, oh, Mr. Questions. Sistar, sure, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, that's right, because um, we went down this with you, and then we, I'm sorry, we got I yield some time? Ah, <laughs> Mr. Sistar. Um, other field use, uh, what, I guess what constitutes that, and why is that, Did you that a deficit? Yeah. So, for example, Natick Frozen Ropes will come right. down and rent yeah. EMC Park for a couple of hitting clinics. Mm -hmm. um, it's mostly private organizations that rent out the little league fields, or uh, you know, we get a, we actually get a, we get some money actually for the common during the marathon. Mm -hmm. um, so it adds up, you know. It but it's mostly in. windfall, really. It's just yeah. you know, nothing it, it that's is, planned. It is Todd, but like frozen ropes, they come every year. That's that's in the bank. Yeah, yeah. But but it's nothing planned. Like we don't have we don't have um, unlike Fruit Street. We don't have external don't organizations coming in and saying, right. you know, we got to use, right. you know, EMC Park for a baseball have, tournament or, you know. Right. I don't have GPS soccer in the, you know, right. every Thanksgiving okay. weekend. And so that's something that we got to maintain the fields, and we just happen to be making some money yeah. on them. Yeah, ancillary the revenue. So, yeah. okay, okay. Um, you know, I think, that, I think that you guys are doing a great job. I think that, uh, you know, as, as – you put it in your own terms. You know, we're definitely on an upward traje trajectory here. Um, looking, just looking at the terminology of this bottom line, uh, general fund subsidy 2017. And that's, not, that's my language. That's okay. That's, yeah, that's I was going to say, I, I personally wouldn't put it that way because, um, I, no, I, I just don't, I don't, I don't like the sound of, Okay. You know, saying that it's a subsidy for you guys because I personally don't expect you to break even or be a profit center. I mean, right. you guys, you guys are a department in town. Uh, the town has, I think, uh, a community obligation to fund fund you sufficiently so that you can put on these programs, these great programs that you're doing, the the playground groups in the summer and sports clinics and basketball, ski, and all this at an affordable price point for everybody in town. So I think you guys are doing a great job. And, and um, you know, I'm, I'm glad that the term subsidy came from you as opposed to somebody else, <laughs> yeah. because yeah, at least that's self-imposed. But, uh, you know, yes. I, don't want, I don't want people, you know, terming it that way and saying, oh, you know, we got to give them another handout just so they can right. stay in business this year. Right. I mean, it's our obligation, and you guys are doing a great job. Thanks, Tom. Thanks. Mr. Mosher. So just a couple of questions. Dan, I know you've been putting a lot of effort into 
understanding this field thing. Do you think at, at some point having the HYSA come at the same time would be beneficial? I uh, come in as, as part of a, a group to um, yeah, just to, just to talk go, about to go plant, long term planning. And, right, exactly. So the process there, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be opposed to that. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that soccer would be, would, would, I mean, they've been a, a very good partner. Um, the process with them and what the user agreement does say is that we, we need to meet twice a year and discuss rates. And we did that three or four weeks ago. Uh, and for the first time, I got some, some uh, really good information from them in terms of the hours that they rent and the revenue they see and, and all that. So um, I, I do think that we're, um, you know, g given the interest that this board has, um, if, if we wanted to have a, a group get together to, to talk about that, then maybe it would be good for us all to be on the same page because it all, it all rolls down to rate setting. So we can charge the youth sports teams in town $80 an hour like we are now, and they can keep their programs at a, at a cost that's similar to the other towns around us. Or we can put more of a burden for this field replacement on them and, and jack that rate up to 100 or $120 an hour and, and see the, the, the user fees that they pass on to the, to the kids that are playing these sports skyrocket as, as well. So, I mean, there's a balance there, and, and, and I think it would be great if we were all on the same page okay, and, thanks. and all part of that discussion. All right, thanks. And I got uh, two more questions. This is just a kind of a general question, uh, Norman. On the... Um, on the indirect costs in, in the cost of uh, like maintaining the common, the DPW budget transfer, is, it, is this really the most practical way to, to handle that money? I mean, it's all, at the end of the day, it's all taxpayer money, but how, how it's a lot, is there a reason why we're doing it this way? In, in fact, that's a, that's a good question. It's a topic that uh, we've been discussing, and it did come up this afternoon. We we don't have an exact answer right now. We will continue to review it with the finance director uh, just to make sure that we, we comply with the uh, accounting uh, yeah. regulations. Okay. I, mean, I can see why you're time. doing it, but at the same time, it's kind of, it's kind of like so we're charging ourselves back for maintaining a ton. But of we do it with a lot of things, though. Yeah, do you know? Charge back that way. <coughs> okay. Um, and then my last question is just around Sandy Beach. You know, are there revenue opportunities there? I know I've talked it's to Jay a little about yeah, yeah, it. you a little bit about paddle yeah. boards or something like yeah, that. Is the I, board I think any? Yeah, I do. I, I think we could rent paddle boards and kayaks. You know, I think we could give swim lessons down there. Um, there's opportunities. I don't think there's opportunities for big chunks, John. I think there's opportunities though to 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 help out with the with the debt service and the staffing down there. It's really the expense at Sandy Beach is really just staffing it, and then the, the debt for the um, refurbishment. Okay. Yeah, there's there's definitely opportunities, and I'm you know we're we're happy to. Definitely explore them all. all right, it's a great place. I don't know if you guys have been down there much since. So it's there been, a lot. Yeah, it's, it's a nice spot. I, I guess. I guess just on on that note, the, the building's only open for a few weeks, right? Is is there any way to extend the amount of time that that building is? If open? I open the building, I have to staff it. That's mm -hmm. that's my issue, and uh, it's expensive to staff it. If I open the building, I gotta have a lifeguard, or I gotta have uh, someone at the gate checking beach passes, and so we typically open it usually the middle of June or right after school ends, mm -hmm. and then we, we have to shut it down when the lifeguards go back to college. Is that like a state law thing? Or? It's not a state law. It's, it's just I, I kind of learned the lesson last year that leaving it open longer isn't necessarily a good thing. Um, it's still open. You can, uh, you can always go down there. But as far as leaving the bathhouse open, the bathrooms, I can, I can always go down there and open them for a weekend or a day if someone requests it. But I think to just leave the place open, it's, it's an invitation to vandalism. It's a little bit of an opportunity for vandalism there. It's, it's, it's a really tough okay. call. Unfortunately, I think we need we need it staffed if we're going to have doors open down there. Those numbers get better if we give you a liquor license. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you, <laughs> we, we, we had some issues last year. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. Any more questions? Awesome. Anything else, guys? Any more questions? So. Um, I guess I'll just follow with Mr. Kamalo on the where the where the dollars actually sit. I mean, if you look through the budget on the expense side and the revenue side, and you compare it to what's in this budget, it seems to align on the uh, request for 17. 
Um, I don't see the revenue side in, in this particular uh, handout we have this evening. Um, but, and I'm sure it's accounted for somewhere, but the fact that we can't say specifically what numbers in that account for the fields tonight is very troubling to me. And I challenge uh, our team to be able to answer that question very quickly. Uh, I don't think it's an unreasonable request to know where that 400 grand is or, or what it's built up to over the years. And if it's not what it's supposed to be, then where is it? How did you get that number from? Well, I'm just looking at the 445 for the revenue side for Parks and Rec in general. So not just Fruit Street, but in yeah, general. What happens is it sits in an enterprise fund. It's like, a, it's like it's got, they have a balance. They have an enterprise fund that has a balance in it. It's a cookie jar. What they've never done, that's, that, but that's like everything. Everything goes into that. Right. And so the point is what they've never done is actually sat down and said, it sounds like, tell me if I'm wrong, and I'm telling me if I'm, you know, but it sounds like what's, they, what's never been done is no one ever sat down and said, in, in year X, we're going to replace a field, it's going to cost Y, and so we've got to have every year, we've got to be go, building the balance up to this. So the, there's a pool of money. It's never been subdivided out to actually decide what should be the right amount to be going toward the fields. Am, right. I, am I more or less? Uh, you, unfortunately, you are. <laughs> so it, the money's there. The money's accounted for. There's no lack of accounting. It's correct. The there's, just been a lack of a, there's just been a lack of sort of the next step, the analysis. Like as, and, and the problem is there's a lot of moving parts, so it's been hard for them to figure this out. Because you have to know what you're gonna, when you're going to do it, what it's going to cost when you do it, what you're going to make it out of, right? All these other things, as they were saying. So I think they're making their way to get there. But it, it's, not, it's, not just look, it's not just like flip open the book and find out what the balance is. It's actually you've got to sort of make some assumptions to get to what the number should be and whenever you're going to do it. I, I, I'll... I mean, Brian, I, I, I agree. Shame on everyone for, for us not having that number. But I, I will say that, that, that we've come a long way in just the last six months in terms of the accounting, in, in the reporting that, that we get to see as a board, and the reporting that Jay gets to see, uh, in, in the work that Chris and, and Norman have done in, in, order, in order for us to start to build these numbers here. Um, it, 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 not necessarily a good thing, but, but I think going forward we're in a good place. I, I, I like. I think you're going and saying we need a, a, a date on the books where we need that number, and, and uh, I think as long as we pick a realistic date, I, I think it's a great idea. Okay, Mr. So just my last question. You brought up vandalism, and, and I think every time Parks and Rec has been in here, it's you hear about vandalism. Can't we just put some landmines, something up there, like some. I mean, with all this wireless sure. stuff. And signs that say no vandalism. We've put signs up there. I mean, uh, <laughs> other than short of, in, in, short of putting cameras up there or having a police detail, I'm not sure what you can really do to keep people yeah. from. What's, this what, is the problem so, with Reed Park. We have all, the, you know, all these yeah. isolated places get trashed. Um, I, we, we've talked about this as a commission a, a few times. And I guess I think I, I mean, with, with your help, I, and, but we haven't talked about it with, with Chief Lee. Uh, it isn't something that we've had come up for a while. Um, I, I almost think when it comes to, to vandalism and that type of thing, while they are our assets, we really need the support of, of the police. We could put cameras up there, uh, and we talked about putting cameras up there, but we don't have anyone to look at. So there's almost no point in having cameras up there. So I, I, I think that's a great idea, John, to, 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 to get cooperation from the police department and, and to come up with a strategy around that. Thanks. I'm good. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming. Thanks very here. much. Thank you. Good. We made a lot of progress. Okay. Um, uh, next set of departments here, really sort of the health and human services. We'll start with, for her last budget, the library. You're way behind schedule, Mr. Chair. You guys talk too much. You. <laughs> yes, no. Ronak, no, it's so nice to see you. Nice so. to see you too. Um, so moving forward, um, if FY17 budget is basically level funded, um, and the the um, the increase basically includes merit increases, and then making the YA library's position year round. 
Have you started to think at all about what we're going to do when, or is it when? Um, I'm sorry, can I speak? Have you started to think? I, I, this, yeah. The budget's fine. I mean, yeah. I, I get it. Have you? Has there been any thought at all yet about what we're going to do when the new building opens up? We're going to have to increase the staffing. And yes, have we, we have done. That yes, we have done. We have done. Last year, we have done a strategic staff planning three year out yep. that we have submitted, and uh, we are actually on target moving forward with that plan. So by the time our new library opens. Um, we should be well staffed. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Ronek about the library? If not, all right. If not, I mostly just want to say I just wanted to call you up because I'm devastated that you're leaving. And so uh, I, I think on behalf of the board, I would very much like to say thank you for many years of wonderful service, making the library into the building it is in town. And obviously we won't get too, we'll, we'll save a lot of this for Thursday night, but, um, but uh, it, you've, you've been phenomenal, and, and I think the, the point it is at now, and the, build, the fact we're building a building now, to a, to a very large extent, is, is completely due to you. And so uh, I think on behalf of the board, I'd like to say thank you very much, and, uh, and uh, you know, best, of, best of luck as you move on. Thank you. It's been it's been honor and privilege really to serve, and I couldn't have done it. it it's been a community effort. I mean, everybody worked toward that. We had wonderful committees, wonderful groups, wonderful volunteer. Uh, so it's been a group effort, and I'm absolutely um, honored and, and uh, excited and happy that I've been part of it. It's been great. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Good night. Well done, Rona. Our next a hard act to follow, Seriously. and we're going to miss no her. More standing ovations tonight for budgets. <laughs> so, uh, what do you have? What do you want? Well, we're uh, fairly level funded. Um, we did have an increase in the salary line, and that was due to bringing the salaries up to the current rate um, that Human uh, uh, that Maria had um, calculated, and that's about really the only difference. Okay. Anybody got any questions for the senior center? Does this bud? Sorry, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. You want to go? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Does, does this budget include the part-time um, receptionist that has been discussed? No, it does not. And Norman and I have worked a little bit on that, and would like to present that. I hope. Yes, and that's the request I'm making to the board uh, that um, together we review the additional staff positions. Uh, and these positions are above and beyond the budget that was presented. So we're going to get to that, but at a separate time. But now, if you have any questions. Go ahead and ask if you want. I, he's got a whole list of, of uh, personnel requests. Yeah, I saw that. But if you want to bring this one up, go ahead. My, my, my understanding is that the senior center would do well, its clients would do well, uh, and the other employees would do well if we had a part-time uh, receptionist sort of managing the flow at the front desk there, which can be Definitely, quite yes. busy at times. Um, so we're going to talk about, do we want to talk about that now? Chief, go ahead. How much is that additional request for? Uh, that is 12500 <laughs> So it's, okay, here it is. It's $12,500. Uh, to add that receptionist position. Cindy, can you just take a minute and explain to us what the benefits of that will be? Well, currently we have 15 individual time slots each week to fill the receptionist area, the duties. We have two people on for the morning and one in the afternoon. Uh, the mornings are our busiest time. Um, they're responsible for registering people, giving direction, forwarding all the phone calls, answering general types of questions. Um, unfortunately, when you're dealing with 15 individuals, you can't keep them current on everything. Misinformation can be given out, uh, forms aren't completed properly. Um, it's taking a lot of staff time to continually go out and answer questions or to review the work at the end of the day and make corrections and find more information. Um, it would be a lot better customer service. 
Uh, it would eliminate a lot of problems and the flow of the work would be better. Uh, we don't get all the maximum use out of our um, sign-in system with the computer. It's a My Senior Center sign-in system and it tracks everything that we do and all our programming, all the services. And that's what we use to report to the state and to track the statistics for our programs to see what's working, what's not. Um, we would get much better use out of, out of it if we had a dedicated person who really knows the system, can do the input on a regular basis, which this would be part of her duties, um, and to really watch people coming in who are bypassing the system and not checking in. Um, so it would have a, a lot of benefits, a lot more accuracy. You know, I know it's literally 15 people. Yeah. <laughs> so it's... Okay. Yeah. So, so Brian, through the chair, in, in, in summary, I think what I heard from Cindy is that continuity, consistency, accuracy, efficiency, freeing up two to three hours of current staff time per day, best practice um, implementation in terms of customer service, but most importantly, better utilization of the My Senior Center data program. <clears throat> okay, good. Do you want to handle these one at a time now in terms of approving or suggesting including it in their budget or adding it to their budget or you want to do this all um i thought we'd uh, you know there's there's written justifications for each yeah. one so if you want to ask individuals and they come up you know like you just did that's yeah. fine okay. i think we would probably i think i'd probably let the town manager go through it all you know because he has a i think right didn't you plan to talk to this and then we can sort of do them all then yeah okay. so can we do them all at once and one fell through if everyone okay? do it okay okay does anybody Thank else you have questions for the center yeah. actually oh, I, I one more mary i have a question um I see that uh, I see that your request for this year was a couple thousand dollars more than uh, what's actually being recommended. Can you give us an idea of uh, what you were what you were thinking of doing with that extra money? That other uh, money? Postage. Um, postage. We have so many more seniors in town. Our mailing is more than 1,600 items each month. Okay. Uh, the rate has gone up. It's and the manner in which we have to mail has saying. changed because. The post office has been kicking back our newsletters. It's, they're not machinable the way they're going out. I'm sorry, they're not what? Machinable. Okay. Um, so it's almost $800 a month versus the $500 a month that we were spending. Um, so it's another 3000 a year. Is there discussion, Mr. Kamalo, in town? I mean, are there ideas on... Uh, what could happen to make these machinable so that you Oh, yeah, we've done so much research with many different companies, mail houses, which is where we are using a mailing house now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. One thing that uh, I'm, it never ceases to amaze me is how efficient your group is with money. Um, and, you know, I see various, uh, you know, grants from, you know, one fund or another uh, that help fund programs that you're doing that I think are fantastic. And when I look at it, it seems like relatively short money to get a lot of benefit. Are there, are there any programs out there that uh, from one year to another or one month to a mother, another, you're never quite sure if they're going to find funding or, or things that you've really been trying to get off the ground that you haven't had funding We've for? We've been very, very fortunate both with Norman's um, input and allowing us to have programming money and with uh, grants and the Friends of the Seniors. Mm -hmm. We're in really very good shape. Um, uh, I did a little analysis for Norman a, a month or two ago and we receive about $92,000 a year outside of the town budget. Wow. So it's hard work but it's well worth it and it involves a lot of the seniors which makes it really theirs. So it's, that's even a double win. Yeah. Great. So, Thank you. so we appreciate everything. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Youth and Family Services. Oh, welcome. Good evening. Um, so you've got a whopping sixty-eight cent change in your budget this mm. year. So I think we <laughs> unacceptable. May... With one little change. Okay. One little request, which is additional well, staffing. That's what I wanted to go to. So sure. I wanted to go. I mean, if you, unless you want to talk to the services you are offering, if there's any changes, can we go right to the person? Um, just more to say, um, when I interviewed for the position, uh, 
just about a year ago, uh, one of the panel members who interviewed me said, I hope you'll be prepared if you have time on your hands and there's nothing to do. And I just, I kind of chuckle now looking back at that to say, uh, that certainly has not been my experience and I'm very pleased that that's not been my experience, I think, in the eight months that I've been here. Um, now that folks know that the service is available, where they can get high quality assistance with an array of needs meeting their, you know, facing their families, that um, the increase in service hours has been about 300 percent services to about 100 families. And I think I've very quickly reached sort of the capacity for what one person can do in a high quality fashion. And so that's really the, where the request is coming from. In order to keep up with the level of demand and to continue to provide the high quality responsive um, services that families need where they are in the way that they need the services, um, we really need to think about expanding to add uh, a part-time staff member. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Catino, questions? Uh, this, uh, this is another, if I can, this is sorry to say, but they seem to have uh, uh, that uh, so well on such a small budget. Thank you. Mr. Sestari. I don't have any questions. Mr. Her. Um, uh, her. Um, you know, I don't think there's anything more important than taking care of the youth in our community. And uh, I'd like to see if there's a way we can make this work with this staffing request. I guess I'm a little confused about these staffing requests in general now, because I thought when we got our budget presentation last week, all this was sort of in the mix. We asked for level services on everybody. Right. So what they came in, no, we asked for level funded, I shouldn't everybody. And so these are all, these are all the incremental they would do if they could, if they could get the money to So it. this is the. This is because the board went out and asked everyone to come in with basically a level, uh, essentially this is above and beyond contractual obligations, we, a level funded budget. This is a strategic initiative. So and this is above and beyond what we got last week. Correct. Okay. I was under the impression it was in, that's my mistake. So I apologize. Um, okay. So we have some discussion we need to have about that, but. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, there's a couple of things here that are very short, short money that I think would be very impactful to the community and our most needy citizens, so okay. we should talk about it. Mr. Mosier. I don't have any, I get it, so I don't have any questions. Right. So, uh, so I don't get it. So I, I continue to wonder, um, are, we, are we putting the town in a position of performing services that are better done by other entities, or you know, are we taking the place of other things that already exist? And so, I guess, I guess I'm, 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 I'm I understand the town is a clearinghouse, essentially, right? As sort of a pass through Randy for people to get services they need from private sources sure. or other public sources. But what I'm worried about is this strikes me as a kind of enterprise that if we were want to continue funding it, we could ge essentially generate our own demand, right? You know, you, I mean, right, hire more people, have more services, you know, you sort of are willing to do more and more things. And so I, I worry this can really grow up. And so I'm just wondering, on a very fundamental level, why, why does the town, are you providing services that the town needs to ha must provide because it's legally mandated or there's no other entity provided and also are you are you um, expanding your offerings to fit the needs because you can and I and I just want to talk about philosophically how far does that take us can you just that's a sure, kind of a big sure. question can you kind of talk to that yeah so first I can say that we are now our program is in alignment with what other uh, towns look like in terms of the types of services that are provided by okay. Westboro Holliston Northboro Southboro like communities um, and they're providing the services with additional staff so we we look different from them only from the perspective of we have one staff member and they have two or at least one and a half mm -hmm. so the provision of the types of services is typical of other towns um, and so I do a lot of parent consultation where folks meet with me once there's some guidance provided perhaps they're going off to be referred to another source of support if it's a housing need if it's a financial need or if it's a connection to some other resource and that's a pretty easy move it off the plate right. um, there are other folks who I do carry as sort of ongoing cases and Though what, what has emerged as those types of cases is folks who would have a difficult time accessing, accessing services from other folks who might look like they provide that. So um, a family facing a substance abuse crisis, they might be able to get in somewhere um, 
quite a while down the line. You know, a child who has some serious anxiety, they call another place, a clinic that could provide that service, it's a month wait list. Um, sometimes co-pays are prohibitive for folks. Um, I also go to people's homes in cases where they have, I have a few cases where kids have developmental disabilities, which makes it hard for families to get uh, babysitters who can allow them to have the access to parent consultation around behavioral issues. So I think we're providing services that are not readily accessible um, for certain families. And I think without the ability to have them access services here at Town Hall for free in their homes immediately within 24 hours of getting response, those are folks that might not get the services at all. Mm -hmm. I have some complex cases of um, youth that are court involved, folks that have had, like I said, a serious substance abuse crisis where their lives have been in danger, where we now have a conduit of care where folks can come to us. And you know, my kind of mantra with families is, you're not alone. <coughs> Call me. Even if I just saw you three days ago and you're facing another you know, situation at home, give me a call. We can have a quick consultation. Sometimes I'm checking in with youth via text just to make sure they're sort of staying on the right path that we've established. That's not the level of service that you're going to get in other places. Yeah, so, so again, if you're talking about acute services, essentially first responder, right, services, right, you know, that's, that I think makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that we don't morph this into something that becomes essentially a chronic Care, right because that's because again I, I worry about a the expense obviously but B for example you know if you're counseling people you you're subject to HIPAA rules well that means the whole town now has to is mm -hmm. now can actually face liability mm -hmm. and in fact I don't know if we've ever gotten the answer to this Ms. Kamalo the town has liability if if HIPAA is violated and those penalties are severe yep. so you know I worry about now we got to think about where your files are if you go what happens to them right if these people are, you know are coming and going and their names are getting put around right I mean there's mm -hmm. those, those are extraordinarily uh, you know prescribed circumstances they operate under and uh, and so I, I I don't get me wrong I think what you do is wonderful yeah, sure. and I think I think if you're providing again these sort of acute care services I think that's a valid town need and I think that's wonderful I, I but I do I will I you know what I worry about is we get further out in the circle here mm -hmm. we we dramatically increase the town's liability and potentially expense sure. and also we're crowding out Against, again, services that I think might arguably be better provided by others. So I just think we need to make sure, we, if you're adding these people, or whatever you're doing more, I think we need to make sure we keep it tight and we, keep, and we understand exactly what the mission here is and we not have mission creep over time. And I do think we've got to figure out this HIPAA thing because if she's got files on people and she's got folks coming in for counseling, we have genuine liability. And, yeah, and it goes, it goes pretty deep too, I mean, right to the IT system and-, and The whole nine yards, that. right. Yeah, I haven't even I mean, thought about that. If you got them the computer and, and stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, who goes in and people signing paperwork, Josh, you know, signing up as, as a BA and things like that. So, yeah. So I can tell you that there's a high level of care to protect, so being well aware of HIPAA regulations um, in a similar way that any other mental health provider or clinic right. would, ha would be caring for people's records, people's privacy, all the way to um, the way I interact with people in the public. You know, I'm a resident of the community and I have protocols in place for if I see you in public, right, this is how store. that is handled, yeah. basically. I don't acknowledge you, and it's not to uh, make you feel bad. It's a matter of protecting your privacy so you're not ever wondering right. what kind of a strange interaction we might have or if I'm with my kids and how you might explain that. So there's a high level of care taken for right. that. So and I clear, also have yeah. professional liability insurance myself. I'm utterly confident in your professional abilities. I'm not yep. trying to say I, I don't trust you, to know that, but I do think that from, the town, from, from, the, from the town's perspective, sure. we may have to let the insurance company know about this. We certainly have to think about the protocols that we as a town want to follow. Okay. And you're going to have, you know, you're gonna, you may have town employees that actually have to be cog, you know, considered of this in some way. So I'm just... I, I'm, I just don't want to bumble our way into something we never knew was coming, <laughs> you know, by sort of not knowing about it. I'm confused yeah. by your line of questioning. I mean, this has been going on in town hall for years. It goes on across Massachusetts, everywhere. This is, we're not reinventing a new, we're not creating a new department here. This is, youth well, services has been here for uh, a long time. And not in this way. The mission's absolutely expanded over the years. I get and the also, stuff and all that, but I, my, I'm hearing a... Why are we doing this question? And well, I, I, I but I am. I am asking. Well, I mean, again, well, no, I'm asking what we're doing because, again, as I said, uh, if you're talking about acute care, right, everything she said, I totally get, right? These are people who are, in, who are in dramatic need or have logistical problems, and our obligation as a community is to try to support them, right? Like I said, it's sort of like, a first, you know, the fire department for mental health. I'm, okay, I'm good with that. 
But if we start talking into taking on troubled individuals and long-term counseling relationships, if we talk about something that becomes more chronic in nature, then I think we're dramatically expanding the services we offer, incurring greater liability for the town, and I would argue philosophically <coughs> not fulfilling what I think of the mandate would be of youth services. And I cut you off, and I apologize. No, it's, it's, so, well, you bring up a good point, because I, I don't think we – did we ever do a charter around this – like specifically the Youth Services Commission has been around forever, and that's what this is, comes from. This but is, not doing this we, stuff we forever. Haven't, we haven't had this same position, though, forever. That's We've had a part-time youth services coordinator forever. Yeah, and, and primarily... Now we have a full-time because the town's bigger. Uh, yeah, right, so I'm I, talking about full-time. But, but is there an existing charter? Charter for the job description for the position? Yes, we do. Do we have a charge for the youth... Uh, commission, yes, we do, which we revised recently. But I don't know that it includes any of that, much of this, any of this. And I and um, services have expanded since um, the way it had been done, sort of historically, in terms of um, employing a social worker in this role with the type of credentials that I have in alignment with what other towns are doing. Um, this is exactly what other towns do. There is the carrying on of some cases where there is the provision of counseling that goes on for a period of time in addition to the parent consultation, managing of acute crisis situations, farming them out. Um, so there has been an expansion. However, my understanding is that the person in the position before me was doing counseling to families. I'm not sure exactly what that looked like. Um, but we are providing ongoing services to certain folks who have a high level of need and are complicated in terms of what they need. You had a question, Mr. Sestari? No, I, I was going to respond to some of Mr. Hur's uh, concerns and comments, but I think that I think that I understand where you're coming from. Um, you know, we're not we're not. It, this doesn't come out well, no it's matter okay. how I say it. <laughs> I have a tough skin. Um, you know, I mean, we don't want to be we don't want to be in the business of of um, you know being uh, the, the the real long term counselors. You know, where you know I'm just going to use an example that doesn't involve kids. You know, uh, guys going through a divorce, and you know, oh, doc, you know, I still don't know what's going. You know, I don't know how to get my act together, and you know, it goes on and on for months and months and. A year and a half later, you're still seeing someone trying to help them get their head together around mm -hmm. something. Um, that's that's not the kind of thing that I think Mr. Palaiko was saying, and I would tend to agree that um, that we think the town should be in. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly understand the cases that that you're explaining, especially in in somewhat of an acute setting, kind of a triage, helping people find direction on where they should be going uh, for more long-term services. Um, and I think that uh, what, what we would like to see is, I guess, more explanation and definition around, you know, how, how long uh, do we carry people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for, for those other types of cases. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just kind of a determination of, you know, is that the, the appropriate thing or is it something where, you know, first of all, I, I certainly understand what you're saying about sometimes it gets to be cost prohibitive, um, uh, you know, whether it's through, through co-pays or whatever, um, but that doesn't change necessarily the line of how far the government should be going to, to fund counseling versus uh, private funding or something of that nature. But, but I think you're, you know, I think you've taken the department you know, at, at least one step up, if not two or three steps Thanks. from what we were doing before. And I think it's, you know, it's fantastic, so. Yeah, none of this is a criticism of what you've done. Oh, I'm, I want to be clear I'm fine. about that. I it's am. just trying to make sure we're sure. not, no, we, yeah, we but, know what we're doing. <laughs> but obviously there's some differing viewpoints about what we're doing and where we're headed. And I think we as a board need to make sure we get our head around that and sort that out in the coming weeks and five right. months. Well, and I mostly want to understand where she's headed. And everything, you know, once you said it, I mean, what I think I heard was she's not trying to broaden out the offerings. It's just the current offerings are getting more demand. And so, I'm, again, if it's acute care, I get it. I'm, I'm good with this. If it's, if we, but as we start to grow the mission, I, you know, I got to ask. See, I why. thought when we went to, from a part-time to a full-time position with town meeting, all this stuff was discussed. The last one wasn't and this a This offering was all. The last person wasn't a social worker. She did, she, she did some sort of ad hockey stuff, but she wasn't, she wasn't never to this degree. So, so admittedly, I'm blending my personal life to my role as a selectman right now in that uh, 
I always called her my friend, but she was my girlfriend at the time. This was 30 years ago. She worked for the city of Newton, and she was a social worker. She was one of five people that the city of Newton employed to do this very stuff. And this was 30 years ago. So that's why I'm very sort of like, what do you mean? We've been talking about I know I'm blending that in my own mind here, and I apologize for that. But I think it's a very typical uh, expectation of local government to support local youth. I'm talking more youth than anything else uh, in, in, in cr times of crisis. And I just think we need, to, we need to get on the same page here because I don't think we are. Anything involving the world crisis, I don't object to. But again, I think, I think, again, I think this is just not, something we have to have a conversation about. We have to okay. figure out where the bumpers lie and how far we want to go. Mr. Marshall. I just summed it up. And I think the Youth Commission has to be part of that discussion, though, because we're not fully overseeing this whole deal here. Well, right. Well, it's, and it's not just limited youth at this point. Right, that's right. thing. It's not so, a Youth Commission anymore. Yeah. So we should probably just understand what's going on. Right. The Youth Commission used to be those little be free things, a couple of part, you know, and once in a while she'd get some. Right, some but they had other services them. that they would provide and stuff. And not to this level. I, I, I have nothing against it. I just think we, we don't want to just walk into it. Okay. Uh, anything else for us? Not for me. You explained to your person any questions about the part time employee? Employee part timers to do more of the same? Mm hmm. Uh, will it be a trained social? The person mm -hmm. be a trained social worker? Yep. Okay. Social worker or licensed mental health clinician. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. very much. Board of Health, Ed. Good evening. Good evening. We uh, follow Board of Health, follow the uh, selectmen's um, budget message, and uh, we're level funded with the exception uh, in that message was contractual. We anticipated a slight increase, so you pretty much have the same budget. Okay. Not asking for anything else, right? Nothing else. Any questions for the Board of Health? <laughs> no. All right. We feel well, healthy. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're all healthy. Good, good job. Board Sorry health. to make you sit here for all that. Uh, so. Board of Health is a clean permit. It's a comfortable chair tonight. So. All right. Good. All right. We'll, we'll put some lazy boys thank back you. there. Thank you. Okay. On to the next group. Uh, IT. All right, since we just saw you, we don't need to, we don't need a whole lot, but you can sort of, um, you got some people you want to bring in and, and uh, a little Correct. bit of budget change. Um, so the, the IT uh, operating expense budget shows an increase of uh, about $48,000 over, over last year. Um, some of that can be attributed to some, um, some expenses that we didn't fully budget for or, or understand. Um, our, our full obligation, um, and so there's not many of those, and none of them are are, um, mm -hmm. are enormous. But is there a pig in the python? Is this is this forty? Is there anything? Is there anything really big? Is there one number that makes up? Um, no, I mean I think the, the the biggest two pieces of that is one is some additional licensing for uh, permitting software and land use that's um, that we started last year, and it was not in the budget, so that that shows up as an increase. Okay. Um, and that's that's roughly twenty thousand. Uh, the other big portion is uh, twenty thousand dollars that's going towards professional services and licensing uh, for some older uh, servers that we have. So it's not hardware; it's just the the operating system okay. version of those uh, those servers. Okay, and those, those are the biggest two. And you got a person, but any any questions on Josh's operating budget? Okay, can you talk to your person? Sure. So I think the. Um, I mean, really, the, the, the key um, to understanding the value add and creating this position is helping to free up some of my time. Um, so, I mean, I knew to the position and, and knew this coming in, but there's, there's a lot of the job that is um, kind of very tactical, ad hoc support. Um, and it's, it's often time consuming. Um, so I think the, you know, the key in understanding this is... Um, a lot of the time that's spent on those ad hoc uh, support requests, it, it's not always complex technical issues, but they can be time consuming to solve. So it's something that from an efficiency standpoint, uh, you know, takes away, may take away from a bigger project or a strategic initiative that I could be focusing on. Um, it's, it's not rocket science IT work, but it's, it, it takes time. Um, so I think that's the, that's the biggest angle. Okay. Any questions uh, on this? Good on IT. Good, John? Good, John? Yeah, I'm good. Also, any way you could 
get this, you know, fill, get a student or something, you know, use a use a kid from the high school who probably knows ten times more than any of us about this stuff, um, or something. You know, I, I mean, it, sort of not not necessarily as a money saving, a little bit of money saving, but also a little bit of you know, giving opportunities for other people. Yeah, I think I think um, you know, opportunities like that certainly exist. Uh, it's trying to find that the right balance of making sure that we're getting someone to pay back. I mean, with anybody that we bring in at, at, at that level, it's going to be a more junior level position anyway. Um, you know, there's going to be some amount of getting them up to speed, and then there, there, there's some amount of hand-holding that's, that's going to be required regardless. Yeah. Um, so I think there may be some efficiencies that we could find there, but I'd, I'd, be, uh, I'd be weary of making sure that we're getting the yeah. right fit and that, and that, there is, that there is actually a payback that, that the town is getting um, from that investment. In, in fact, this past year we had at least four or five interns go through the department. Yeah. And currently we through a, a fantastic um, um, collaboration, a collaborative effort with uh, Youth and Family Services. We are starting some work with a high school student. Uh, okay. Yeah, I would like to find ways to do that when we could. So, okay. Yeah, I think. Um, but you need a person. I get it. You need a real employee. Yeah, I think. I think looking at it from from the you know maybe at the high school or intern level, I think the the concern there too, back to the making sure that we're actually getting the payback is, what's the tenure of yeah. that person's ability to stick with us? If we're looking at a, a senior, right? The hopes are they're going to be going away to school, uh, to, to college, right? And so we're gonna we're, we're gonna lose their ability, and so uh, we want to make sure there too that we're not uh, you know retraining somebody every every six months. Okay. I don't think we have any more questions. Can you, can you teach people how to save an Excel spreadsheet as a PDF so I can actually search? <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> Absolutely. Apparently yes. you and I have the same absurd request. Because <laughs> uh, I, we'll, I asked for it just today. We'll, okay. we'll make that change for you. Absolutely. There'll be, no, there'll be no person for you until you fix that crucial technology issue. Sure thing. All right. Thank you. We're thank good. you. Thanks, Jeff. All right, Chris, finance. <clears throat> Gentlemen, Ward's getting tired. Every minute you go long, it's like a cost of money at this point. Cutting the rest. <laughs> <laughs> every, min every minute over two costs money for you. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Uh, so I'll present the uh, uh, treasurer, the assessors, and the um, okay. and the uh, accountants. Budget. The the accountant's budget uh, main driver in that is salaries. We level funded, but the change in positions and um, it, and and my coming on board that's that's the driver to that. We've mm -hmm. actually our expenses actually go down quite a bit, um, and that's just due to um, some of the things that I found in there that just I I don't think are necessary. So. Um, uh, there are some things that we've used consultants for that I don't think w w are needed, and so I've eliminated those. Um, so that's that's on the accountant side. On the on the assessing side, the main driver in the increase again salaries are level funded. Um, the main driver of that is uh, there is a line in the um, assessor's budget for appraisal services. And sometimes we get some big projects that come through, and uh, they take a particular type of expertise in order to, uh, to appraise those properly, and so we have to hire outside help for those. Mm -hmm. So we, the, we've only budgeted the cases that we know of, plus a little bit of a cushion. Um, the, the amount that you see the percentage going up isn't actually that great because there was a transfer due to an appraisal that we needed done this year that, that was not budgeted for. Um, if you take that into account, it reduces the amount of the increase for next year. And uh, then on uh, treasury, treasurers, I finally get to give you some good news. That actually went down, um, and that's just from the turnover and from the, uh, from the retirement of the long-term treasurer. Okay. Questions for Chris? And you got no people you're asking for, so questions for Chris? I just want to commend him on not only talking the talk, but walking the walk. You know, I mean, here he is. I'm sure he's 
talking, you know, with Mr. Kamalo, through Mr. Kamalo, to other departments. They're trying to keep costs down. They're trying to cut costs where they can. Here he's been here for three, four months, and he's going out, out on a limb and cutting the expenses for his own department by about 20%. Uh, where, he, where he thinks that they can do things internally rather than use consultants. And so I just want to say thank, thank you. you. I hope it works out for you, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris, were you here when we were talking about the, the Parks and Rec and the yes. various accounts? Yes, so, so I've been very that? involved with so Parks and Rec. Can you get on yes. that for us, please? I'm can sorry? Can you get on that with a, for us, please, through the town manager and – figure out what, where the money is and what accounts it is and so forth? I certainly will. Thank you. I'm good on the operating budget. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Thank you so much. Have a nice night. Uh, town clerk. It's good to go late. Good to have you. Yeah. Well, again, everyone came in more or less. So it's like this Norman. is hard. Thanks. 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 Welcome. Hi. Hi. All right. You want to tell us what's... Um, just give it, you know, you got, you got a big bump in the budget. There's a big bump in the budget. Part of it is because of the salaries with the town clerks. Because we are not sure who's going to be coming on, um, my salary, I felt, needed to stay as it is right now rather than going back down to an assistant salary. Because I'll be basically training the new town clerk if they don't have much experience. And you'll be using all of the experience and skills and my knowledge that I've been imparting now and using now with the most recent election and the budgets, et cetera. So I'll be helping with training and with the new town clerk. So. The assistant town clerk yes. role is got to, I'll let you go. Yes. <laughs> he is the explanation. Brenda is actually running the office right now assisted by a temporary individual and she's getting the job done. We have also realized through this process the value that she brings to the office and so instead of preaching this as maintaining her salary um, if when she goes back to the assistant maintaining her salary as is now we're simply going to reevaluate we will reevaluate her salary vis-a-vis uh, -vis what we now know in terms of your contributions. So <laughs> I'll let you go first. <laughs> all right, so, so through the chair, if she's doing all the work and the new town clerk comes on and is basically under her tutelage, then perhaps that position is paid less. Unfortunately, it's elected and it's got a set salary. All the more reason to appoint the position. Amen. That's a town charter question, though. So we're working on with the charter, right? The problem is that salary is fixed by town meeting. So I'll, I'll let you go ahead, but so, that's the issue. Okay, so I guess we go, my next question is, is there any opportunity at the upcoming town meeting to either address that this appointed is an appointed or elected position or address the salary of the position? It's in the it's charter, and you won't know who the new person is in, at town meeting. In, in. So, okay. so, so, what a mess. so, so could we amend it to reflect the experience level of the individual? Yeah, elected? exactly. Yeah, and, and ask we, town meeting, ask town meeting to basically approve some pre-specified salary structure for the for the town clerk as they're coming in. So, if it's somebody who is getting elected and has zero experience as town clerk, um, then they shouldn't be getting paid as much as somebody who does have experience as town clerk. Agreed. And if we set up some type of some type of a structure uh, like that, then you know it's still in town meeting's hands to say whether that structure is fair or not. But it doesn't allow somebody who to come in with zero experience and just shoot to the top of the ladder and you know all of a sudden be making uh, the you know. Isn't the problem, though, that town meeting sets the salary? And who's going to set it if they don't? We don't have the ability. Well, none of us have the ability to set the salary. Yeah. They don't work. The town clerk doesn't work for us. Well, I know could, that. Yeah. I know that. No, I'm saying that. So we can't set their salaries. I'm trying right. to say. Right. Okay. But 
sponsor. But elected right? officials get shot to the top all the time and have zero experience. I mean, we're talking about a big can of worms here. I like it, but it's a big can of worms. The it's, problem is, if it's, it's a range, who's going to say it's the range? It's different with, with elected officials who are not making decisions unilaterally. Uh, and and there's, a, there's a greater body that has influence on those decisions yeah. as well, as opposed yeah. to the town clerk who is in charge of that department, and things need to be right. <laughs> And, and that's why there's, that's why there's training uh, for them to attain also. So if there's some type of a structure that's, that's uh, uh, brought to town meeting, you know, whether it's based on experience, certifications, and things of that nature, um, you know, that, that seems pretty reasonable. And, I totally agree. I'm just, I, it's an interesting and, question we're going to face here. And we just have to make sure that the budget supports any level of that, uh, you know, going in. Mr. Kamau. I think the answer to Mr. Moja's earlier question is that uh, um, at the close of the town meeting warrant, we received not only a petition, but also uh, a suggested article from the personnel committee um, um, that will be asking town meeting and the uh, residents of the town to consider an appointed versus an elected. But isn't the, isn't the charter? The charter says it's a You have to do that through the charter revision. We're talking with town council to see what options are. I mean, there's, there's no way. Well, so that, would, that would obviate the charter. <laughs> there's no way. So through the charter, a couple of years ago, we had a vote on that, did we yeah. not? Yeah, 2010. Yeah. But it still requires amendment to the charter. And the charter has to go to the state. Special act. Um, but again, yeah. this is a topic of interest to many people in town, there are two articles that have been submitted are for consideration. We have vetted those articles no. to determine what causes of action they have. Well, well, specific to Brenda's budget submission right. this evening, right. she's submitting a higher budget based on the fact that we may have to carry a couple of people at different salaries than we typically would, which makes sense because we could always spend less. We just can't spend more. But I will say my view is I'm not interested in paying two town clerk salaries, right? Someone's going to have to be up. Someone's going to have to be down. I, I do not. Yes, I, I think from a budgeting perspective, you're right. You kind of have to do this. But I will point out that I don't, the intent is never to pay two full town clerk salaries. I agree. OK. And then you have an, anyone else? Any other questions on that? It, not on that specifically. but. And it's not even on this coming year's budget, but I'm seeing the projection for 2018 with the expenses ballooning from $10,000 to $300,000. Can can somebody just give me an idea what that's about? I'm sure that must be Chris. I'm sure that's a really formulaic error. Where do you see that? See, I just had the printout from last week. Right there. That which which one are you looking at? Yeah. This one? is uh, for I do a type of. Tom Clark. So, Mr. Sister, which document are you Which page is that on? Page two? I'm hooked. On page two, Todd? No, he's, he's got a different one. So. Yeah, you, you've got it. Mine doesn't show that. Mine shows 10,000. Oh, no, it does. Expenses goes to $305,000. Where? Uh, page two, page two, the top of page two. I believe that's a formula. Fix that. Okay. It's in the, in the middle line. Projection model. Yeah. Okay, fine. I see 10,000. Go to the, go to the right. 2018. 2018, $305,000. I don't have 2018. Yeah, yeah. That's great. <laughs> I don't know. You found it. Now we can knock off. You found their mistake. I don't have it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, whatever. Okay, we're on. All right. Uh, your person, you got a part assist part time. I'm requesting a part time part time staff in the town clerk's office um, because of the increase in the population. Um, right now, we have been utilizing senior workers and volunteers. Um, since January, they've been working about 25 to 30 hours per week, which with limited skills basically we have them doing the basics and i'm finding i'm still not able to um, complete a lot of tasks with the temporary help i think if we had a permanent part-time employee with 19 hours we can utilize them at 
times when we need them and cut back when we're not, such as with elections. I mean, yeah. it's very hard with a 15-hour uh, day, you know, with temperate, with seniors in there to cover for lunches. Um, dog licensing, January to May is really our busiest time with dog licensing, street listings, and that's when we're using the 25 to 30 hours a week with the seniors. Um, elections starting in November, instead of absentee voting, people can early vote. So I think with a part, trained part-time staff, that will help with um, the early voting. They're expecting to see a triple rather than the thousand absentee voters you'd get on a presidential election. They're looking to see three. So with that additional staff, that will help them markedly to increase our efficiencies in the offices. Okay. Okay. Any questions on the part-time administrative assistant? Okay. We're good. So again, I think it's staffing for both, and it right. will be dependent. Okay. Thank you, Brenda. Um, the elections is the other part of my budget. Yep. And you'll see an increase in the salaries there. That's basically due to the minimum wages for the election workers. That increase in minimum wage, and with the no. I think there's an additional election. We got the September primary. I budgeted for a um, October special town meeting just in case. Um, the November election, I'm expecting to have additional staffing due to the expected increase in activity for that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Great job last week, by the way, uh, oh, with, the, with the election. And was the new configuration uh, specific because of the expected outcome? The, or the new configuration oh. is because the school doesn't want us to use that side entrance any longer. Oh, I'm, I'm referring to the lanes driving oh, into your the cattle lanes, yes. Um, we started in November with just half of the roping used. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the discussion that I received and feedback I received from the election workers were people would get to a point and see all these tables and weren't really sure. So I added, purchased more roping mm -hmm. and added the signage, hoping that cleaned it up a little bit. It and great. we had a lot less issues with that. Yeah, it was great. I, li I liked that. Um, that. You know, I mean, as minor as it may seem, I liked the entrance and. You know, just did you like the big the, flag? I did. I honestly did. <laughs> I, I want you to know we did have some complaints about parking. Yeah. I don't think the public realized that they should be parking in that lower back parking lot. Because once I heard there were complaints, I was like, well, I left the hall a few times for, to get um, absentee ballots. And I was able to park in the same spot. Yeah, I was not I being aware out. that, that so. it was open because everything else was so full. Yeah, everybody's and looking when they first come in, in to grab the cars spot. backing up already. You're like, oh, I better get the first spot I can right. find. So, <laughs> so, but, was great so job. I think as we go further with using that back entrance, I think it'll work a lot better for everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Human resources. <laughs> Hi, Maria. Hi. Welcome. Dive right in. Just, you know, you got a couple little items and you got one person you're asking for, so just go for it. Sure. <clears throat> so, so do you want me to speak to the additional person or can you speak to you the, you know, you just, can you just tell us why, you, you know, tell us why your budget changed, right? You got expenses going up and you got personnel services going up. Sure. Quick so two seconds summary in that and then uh, the summary on the person. Great. So, so um, one of the drivers is in employee training, and um, uh, there, there's insufficient fund to even do some baseline professional development. A lot of it is um, part of the requirements of job descriptions. For example, the folks in water and sewer, they have to maintain um, licenses, certain licensing. So that, so that was the one increase in expenses there. And the, um, uh, the additional person, um, just to give you an idea, we've got 261 town employees, 128 are, are full and part-time, 113 are seasonal, 
uh, per diem. And then we've got about 20 that work less than 20 hours. Um, the, the best practice is 1 to 100. And right now, we're at 0.76. Um, prior to my coming, the, uh, my predecessor uh, was in the office alone. And so we have um, the HR generalist primarily does the benefits, which is it, it's a lot just to onboard one person. Um, and then, you know, so HR is responsible for classification and compensation, uh, employee relations, professional development training, um, and, ev and everything else in between. So there's just not enough of us to go ar ar around. Um, any questions for Maria? No. Where's this person going to fit? That's an excellent question. That's what I did. <laughs> right, now they, <laughs> right now I would put them at my circular table, but excellent okay. question. That's my, yeah, that's my only concern. Okay. Thank you very much, Maria. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Land use. You can stay there if you want. Land use. No change in personnel or uh, programs coming up. Uh, the only change is to the um, personnel line item to the SAP adjustments made this year going forward, pay equity and SAP adjustments. So no changes to personnel or programs. Okay. Anybody got any questions for Elaine? Nothing. No changes. <laughs> not for Elaine. Not for Elaine specifically, but this whole topic of reorg. I want to kick around. Yeah. Well, that was okay. That's actually that's actually next. The town manager. <laughs> yeah. So if um, so, please. Yeah. So I, I I think clearly the request that you've had for additional personnel are driven by the growth in town the need for us to maintain the higher quality and levels of service. Uh, and most importantly, we have identified strategically areas where we can make the, uh, the biggest uh, a difference in the community. Uh, you will notice that um, these are departments that have not had any staff changes for many, many, many years. Uh, and. They also, uh, we've identified, uh, particularly for the facilities department, uh, needs that are driven by the growth in the town's <coughs> building footprint. So, what, responding to growth in town, uh, we are proposing this position so that we can maintain the higher quality uh, of services provided to the citizens of Hockington. Uh, and most importantly, these are positions that perform a strategic role and I'm here to uh, answer any questions you may have. Oh, on actually, I want to go back to Lane for a second. Lane, I thought you said there were no changes, but I just saw forty-one thousand dollars in change. That's so. It's mostly due to the um, the pay equity and SAP adjustments made for the hourly employees this current fiscal year. Mm -hmm. uh, that was retroactive, and then that's the same rates going forward. Oh, okay. So, so the changes because it changes. Okay. And we fine. had to budget a little bit more for overtime to take minutes at mm -hmm. planning board and concom. Okay. meetings due to that increase in rates. Got it. All right. So we've already talked about all the personnel on the list. Mr. Kamal, do you have anything you want to add about any of them? Or perhaps do you want to talk about the very first one on the list? What, sorry? The personnel additions? Yes. We've already talked about all of them except the first one on the list. Do you have any desire to, to add to the, any of them? And then if not, can you talk about the first one on the list? Um, yeah, we can talk about the first one on the list. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, um, I, I think again, the, this is this is a discussion that the, the town has been engaged in for several years now. Uh, I think we have an opportunity uh, to see the value add for the assistant town manager position um, in the current system we have, where we have Elaine. Uh, performing uh, her duties as the land use director and at the same time taking up the higher level operational functions uh, assisting the town manager in the, the running of, of, of the town. 
So what would this assistant town manager person do? Basically formalizes the role that Elaine has, has, has now asked you. Oh, so what this is is putting Elaine into that role. That is correct. Ah, officially. And, but doesn't the salary net at some level from the land use director salary that's currently in here? Is this incremental, that's, all of it? No, not all of it is incremental. Um, we will need to have a conversation with, with the planning staff to see if there are any adjustments that need to be made to the planning budget. Because don't we currently have a full land use plan director in, this, in the budget? Don't, isn't Elaine currently budgeted in lane, land use? Yes, he is. And Jamie's position was budgeted as town manager, well. correct? Yes. So yep. the combination of those two is more than this number right here? That's what I'm trying to understand. Yes. Okay, so it is. So this is a net. So this that's okay because that's that's not clear to me. This is a, de a reduction. All the others are in addition, <clears throat> from what I can gather. This one's a little bit separate animal. Yeah, there are three components to this. Yeah. There is the Jamie position, the Elaine position in land use, and the principal planner position, which currently is funded through the revolving account, but yeah. not through a general appropriation. Okay. That's why I went with this additional 125. But. Okay, I don't understand that. So I think, I think what we need, I think what we and, and everyone else will require is a little bit more clarity as to where the shells are moving. Okay, okay. So, so there's this that's 125. Um, if it's just being added, then you know, we can look at it as just being added and assume that all those other positions that are either empty now or currently being filled by Elaine will be replenished with new candidates. Or we can look at it and say, okay, so this is 125, but we know we have this amount from Jamie's position that's going to offset this because we're not going to hire a new Jamie. And we know that we have this amount from Elaine's uh, other duties. And yeah, we'll probably rehire someone, but we can budget less. And all of a sudden we break even. And this doesn't even need to be a discussion because it's, it's accommodated with the current budget. So that's, that's kind of what we need to know. And that is in line with the discussion at town meeting last May. And I think it's imperative that we maintain that context throughout this conversation. That town meeting said, no, we don't want to add 100 grand to have an assistant town manager, whatever the number was. Mm -hmm. We want, they voted it down. So the discussion was about the money. It wasn't about the position. We see the need for a position. We have to find well, a way to fund it in an appropriate yeah. manner in line with town meeting. I don't know that town meeting saw the need for the position. Right. Um, I don't think know, they did either, but they talked about the money. Right. But it doesn't change the fact that from one year to another, um, things don't change or people don't see things a different way and realize, okay, yeah, maybe we do need this position. Um, the town's growing, as you mentioned earlier. And that's why we have more policemen, we have more firefighters, we have more lieutenants on the police force. And, and just a couple of years ago, we expanded the, the land use and planning department because there was need for more resources. And I think that what we've seen being much closer to the day to day here is that there is a need on, on the town side and in the town manager's office for that extra resource. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's a matter of other people seeing that the same way. Right, All that said, yeah. depending on what your answer to that other question is, we may or may not have to bring this up at town meeting. Uh, because if, if this 125 is offset by all those other moving parts not necessarily being filled and not being filled at the same salary as today, and it can be accommodated without expanding the budget, then it doesn't need to be discussed. Okay, let me go, let me go Mr. Mosier, who had his hand up. Okay, so, so usually you, you, you evaluate the need, articulate, describe the position. Then you find out how much you need to fund that position. Then you find the person. That's so right. So right now, we just have a number. And we have a number against, we had a full-time operations assistant, full-time land use planner, or director of land use, I'm sorry. And now we're adding an assistant town manager. So across those three positions, we can't expect one person to do all three of those positions well. And so and so to me, this is this is strategic versus administrative. 
around this position. So I feel like you need to define it, then fund it. We have an, it appears as though we have an appropriate person, but I think that that we're not approaching it right if we ignore that there's you still have administrative needs in your office, right? So you had two people there before, now we have one. Is right? correct? Yeah. So I think at some point to make this a successful position, it's 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 got to be defined. And it's got to be balanced against what what the current needs or the current positions are against what the future needs are you're trying to address. Go ahead. Yep. So far, here's what I'm hearing. That there may be opportunities to offset the $125,000 that we're asking for. And those offsets could come from the operations assistant position and the land use planning and permitting director funding in the land use department. I get that. The second piece that I'm hearing specifically from Mr. Moja's comment is that as part of this process, we have also have to account for should we need additional administrative support, how are we going to pay for that? Actually, I think it's slightly. Well, go ahead. Do you want to? <clears throat> I think. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Take. That's part of it. I mean, I think. I think. And, and if I'm wrong, just just tell me. But I think what we we've, we've all talked about at some point in time is is the ability for the for the town manager's office to be able to be more strategic, right? And to do that, you have to extract yourself from the administrative burden of administration. You can't you can't do both full time. And so I guess my my question is, although I'll de ideally it'd be great to say the salary is it nets out to zero cost, you know, zero increase, and there's no need for this or that. The reality is, if we're trying to add a function, a strategic function that we don't already have, we still have existing administrative needs. If we're going to invest this money, I'd, I'd rather make sure we have a plan in place that allows this position to be what what I think it's intended to be. Right. Yeah. right, it's not intended to be a replacement for Jamie. I think right. we all know that. So I think there's, as I, I think what I, from what I've heard, there's three things. There's, there's the buckets, right, the dollars, where how, what's the pluses and minuses. There's the job description for the assistant town manager, right? So this didn't work at town meeting for two intermingled reasons, the money and the lack of clarity on what we're gonna do with this job, right? How is gonna be distinct from the town manager, in my opinion. So, so we need to know what this assistant town manager is gonna to do, to Mr. Mosier's point, because we're not just looking to have a higher paid version of Jamie, right? So you, I think you need to sort of describe the bifurcation of duties here between the town manager and, the assistant, and this proposed assistant town manager, how it's gonna change. And the third thing is land use, planning is either going to have to replace a person or have a chunk of the assistant town manager, right, of Elaine's time. And maybe she can do both, maybe now, but I think, you know, having heard not that long ago that we had to beef up that department and we hired more people, now it seems like we're taking away people and I don't, so can we really get by with less? Or is this just going to become another job to fill quickly? So I think we have to understand whether this is detracting excessively from land use and planning that department or if that's just being turned into part of the job description for the assistant town manager. So I, I th right, so I don't want to do this and then create a new job position requirement up, you know, up, up, upstairs on the third floor because we just moved Elaine down to the second floor. So can I jump in Please. real quick? From my perspective, town is big enough now and what I see in town hall every day and what I see in my interactions with the town manager about a myriad of different topics that we all do uh, in our own way we need an assistant town manager and in many communities the assistant town manager also serves as the director of land use and planning and I'd be good with that so yeah. from a, so while we happen to have the person that can do that you know I'm trying to all, all due respect forget Elaine for a minute here and just to your point address the structural question. I think the st structurally and sort of size-wise and, and for a lot of other reasons, we need an assistant town manager. 
and that assistant town manager can also fill the role of land use planning director, which is typically done in many communities in Massachusetts. How we take care of the administrative piece of the puzzle on both the land use side and the town manager side, I think needs to be addressed. I don't think that needs to be addressed at this level, however. I think the team can figure that out down the path a little bit. Uh, in terms of the finances, to be respectful of town meeting, as long as we can move those shells around appropriately, I'm good with this. Well, yeah, but the, let me the, just let me just see if do you have anything to say? No, no, do you, no, I, you're I, good. I, okay. I, I I agree with Mr. Her 100 percent. With with the the one exception being that if filling those administrative needs involves having to allocate more funds to you know hire. New yeah. Well, then we'll have to have that conversation at you know, that then, time. Then it does affect things. Right. So there, but we might have to do that anyway. I think we can disentangle that from this <clears> conversation because whether or not he needs more administrative support. Is irrelevant, right? This, we're not going to hire someone else to. We're going to have to hire for that role. This role wouldn't subsume part of that in any case. So I, I agree with you, but I, you know, it isn't like this job could become partly. It isn't like again, we're not hiring a super Jamie. I guess from the, no. for the administrative piece, I think that's probably going to have to happen. But with all due respect, that's their problem for right now to figure out and come back to us and, and tell yeah, us. Yeah, it's a separate need. conversation. And, yeah. and and to the point that you were making, though. Um, kind of replacing the function of Jamie is more than just simple administrative replacement. Well, it's come, you know, he was out, he was, he was working up, right? So now we're going to put that at where it belongs to an assistant town manager and have the administrative function be filled by administrative people, I think. Because don't forget, he came in basically as an administrator, you know, and then, and then just sort of grew, grew larger to the point where he became sort of functionally a much larger job without probably being paid for it. I don't see the community being concerned about, and really, it's within it's in the charter too. The town manager organizes the town, you know, town hall, um, and I don't see the community really has a problem with that. It's just we want to make sure we're not just adding head adding headcount. I think the community's concern is we're adding headcount, adding cost, and what are they doing? Well, what are they doing? He can figure that out. We're not adding cost because we're going to balance it out with some other eggshells that we have on the table or whatever you call it. Uh, so I think I think it can get worked out. I agree. I think if the dollars are just incremental to the extra work she'd be doing, this is not a hard conversation, right. Mr. Mosier. Yeah. So uh, I think too is these a position like this right easily pay for itself in save costs and future development. Um, but what you know, however it gets presented, it's got to be clear. Clear what the function is. Clear what the organizational structure is, and absolutely clear how how it's going to be funded Amen. for for it to get through town meeting. But there will not be a separate. Let's, we're not proposing a separate article to add a, a, a assistant it just, it just town manager. It just rolls through the budget. Because this is a budget discussion. As long as the budget is flush or it's up twenty or thirty grand, because we're doing a couple of little things. I mean, in my mind, it's just land use goes down, town manager's you know department goes up, right, and then and you sort of net it. I mean, and I don't even know if we have function, to tell people uh, we're going to make. I mean, Norman can call her anything he wants. I don't think we're going to have to even tell people. I mean, I, I'm not trying to say we hide explain, it. Yeah, we I'm not trying to say we hide meeting. it. I'm just trying to say that we, is, I don't think there's a legal obligation to. He can run this have a separate likes. article. There, we do not need. I guess that's a good point. We don't need a separate article like we had last year to fill this position. If we and the town manager think that position needs to be filled, and we can do it within a reasonable budget number, because yeah. it's tied to a broader budget. And, and just to clarify, we don't need to think it. He's the only one who needs to think it. He does have the authority right. to organize town hall uh, As he sees with, fit. with his own Good vision. point. So. We're just being helpful. <laughs> we're from the government. We're here to help. Yep. So. Okay. Good. So can we, can we, can we you know, but this, so we should figure this out tightly, though. So can we make sure we have the, the buckets, where, you know, how the buckets work out and what the net effect is? Can we know what the assistant, what your proposal is for this person to do, so we can say that we we agree with it, and then can we figure out what this what impact this has on land use planning? If lanes, if their idea is for lane to be to stay that director, as Brian said, and then sort of move up, that's terrific. Um, but we should we should have that, and obviously the planning board should have bought into this because right there impacted. <clears throat> Okay. All right. Anything else, Mr. Kamala, on the town manager? Anything else in uh, on the people? Anything else? Anybody want to ask about any of the other budget items um, not represented here this evening? Veteran service, you know, veteran services, dog catcher, all that kind of stuff. Anybody got anything? Okay. So, with regard to these people.
Yes. Does, does anybody, uh, did you have a question? I'm sorry. So just taking the 125K out for right now, because I think that one we can address separately. You've got 314, so you've got 290, you got uh, $190,000, correct? Mm -hmm. So $190,000 is approximately 0.25% impact of tax base, roughly, a little bit less than that, maybe 0.2, okay. right, well, to, the, to the taxpayer. So we're, if we're going to add 0.2% here, can we find 0.2% elsewhere? Well, let's remember the goal here. The goal was to increase services, right? These, these are service enhancement questions. So I don't know if I would ask, if I, if I personally feel that I need him to go off and net this. I think it's more of a strategic question of we asked everyone to come in with level funded budgets, which they did. And then the question is, do we want to buy into some or all these service enhancements to the tune of $190,000 in total? I personally don't need him to go back and take $109,000. Right, but what that does to the, and I understand, but what that does to the tax impact is it goes from 2.65%, 2.85%, give or take, you know, a hundredth of a point. And a 2.85% tax increase is getting close to three. A 2.65 is closer to two and a half. Two and a half is what typically would be a deal in a kind of normal year in the world. We have this excess levy, so we can go above without an override, blah, blah, blah. We can get really complicated here, but we don't need to. I'm just a little concerned that we're creeping up in that tax levy above a normal two and a half number. That's why I bring it up. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mosier, sure. So, uh, <coughs> well, so, I, I've been going to you for a second all night. Do you want, do you have anything? Uh, do you? I, I just have one more question. I just want a point of clarification. On these positions, the ones that are labeled part-time, they're truly part-time, no obligation to post-employment benefits or any other benefits. It's just part-time, hourly, you come in, you get paid, and that's what you get. That, that is correct in terms of health insurance benefits. They do not qualify. Yeah. All right. And nothing at the end of their term, no pensions, nothing like that. Pensions, that, that may be different. It's 10 years of service, though. Yeah. Yeah. As long as we don't have the year combined two to a full time position, we do have pensions. And I'll get into that because So, do the two full time, I'm assuming the uh, heavy equipment operator, yeah, they're full time. Do the full time positions, do those? save us money at some point in there? Is there a reason why we're hiring them? Yes, uh, clearly um, on the DPW side, the, the, the growth in the community alone uh, in terms of road mileage. And service enhancements. Yes. Um, service maintenance, maybe. Yeah. The need is for a full-time position. So are we hiring these out currently? Out. Right. No, no. Like outside vendors coming in and doing it, we're paying them. That's why we're we have these positions. Are these purely just based based on new service that we're not providing currently? Yeah, new service that we are yeah. not providing. Okay. Timely fashion. DP Dower basically says he just facilities he doesn't have enough people. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 yeah, facilities clearly is based on the two new. Okay. <coughs> All right. Thanks. So can we drop these into the next version, and then can we can you see if you can, you know, what you can get out? Can you can you tighten up something else and and spring a few dollars to cut back the net cost to Mr. Hur's concern? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. And, and then for the board's meeting on the next Tuesday. Yeah. So on the fifteenth, what I'd like to do is um, is basically just sign off on this, and then I'd like to do Warren articles. How many are there? I did the list. Um, 283. So this should not. This budget should not be a long conversation next week. So let's do a final. Let's do a final set of questions. Any major changes? Chris will have fixed his egregious error, and then we'll. Um, and then we'll uh, just go right to Warren articles. But do you know how many Warren articles we have? Yeah. I do not. I haven't heard since the Warren closed. I have yeah. no idea. Um, we we have a long list. Um, but most of the articles are already covered in the 
list of capital articles uh, that were included in the budget. Okay. Yeah. Good. Anybody any questions on any of this? Any final comments on the budget? I think that's it. So I think. Let me just make sure. I think I just want to make sure there's nothing else I'm going to forget before I do this. No. Chair, I'll a motion to adjourn. Move. Second. Motion second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, voting. That's unanimous. Yeah, I don't want Not everyone. Thank you. <laughs>